Broadcasting from the jungles of Southeast Asia, it is time for the Ed Namrock Podcast! What's up guys? If you have worked for a large corporation like a chain of a restaurant or a retail place, I want to hear the secrets that only the employees know. I worked at Hollister and I think it's different now, but back in the day, it was kind of messed up. There were two positions. One was called backstock and one was called model. And the model was like the customer service people who actually were on the floor and dealt with customers. In order to be a model, you had to be attractive. And in the interview process, they rate you from a scale of one to 10. You had to keep your hair and makeup natural. You couldn't paint your nails and you could only wear their clothes that were navy blue and white, including shoes. So when I worked there, they only had the flimsy little flip flops and I just had to wear those on my shifts. And the reason they're called models is because apparently Hollister, like all of their ad models, all of the models in the pictures were pulled from the employees. And on Black Friday, they always picked the skinniest girl and paid her more than everyone else to stand in the front with the shirtless guys. It was so messed up. It was always just on looks. Well, I can't say I'm surprised simply because I also have a story about working at a major retailer. Um, And yes, there's a lot of secrets to this retail. I don't even call them like secrets. They're basically retail hacks and reverse engineering that a lot of us pretty much got away with. And a lot of this can be said out in the open now because it's kind of buried in the past. And, you know, Roger knows exactly what I'm talking about. And, um, and guess what, Roger? We what? finally got this son of a bitch to come on the podcast because he had to go fucking shoot guns in the Albuquerque, in the high deserts of Albuquerque, oh, New Mexico. He had to go grill some steaks. He had to go check his employees ain't dying of COVID-19. Yeah, And then he had to hit the punching bag. Look at this son of a bitch. What the he finally fuck, joined us man. on the podcast. Yeah, it's about fucking time. It's about time, man. Can you be asleep, old man? I got my coffee going. Oh, so now I would be asleep right now. So, <laughs> first and foremost, my brother, thank you for joining us. It's been my a minute, man. A lot of fucking shit has been happening in the world. It started today, but you know, before we, you know. I guess recognize that we now have a new uh, 46th president of the United States. That's Mr. Joseph. Is it Robin Hood Biden? Is that his, is that his middle name? I heard Robin Hood when I was listening to that shit. I was like, what no, the fuck? Junior. So, uh, it's Joe, Joe Biden. Hold on. I just need a fact check because I heard Robin Hood, bro. What? Robinette. Robinette. There you go. Robinette. Robinette. Oh my God, Manny. Where the hoes at? You know where they at? They ain't they in the house, bro, because they're they're that shit on, is on lockdown. They're here on Whole Olympic Boulevard. Whole Olympic. And Wh- Horfield. Horf- <laughs> By Hangover. So, yeah, oh, that's, that's, that's terrible. Me and Jose have many stories to share, and we're probably going to get into those because. Yes, sir. All right, so I just showed a video, Jose, and it talks about retail secrets and retail hacks, re- the shit that we would reverse engineer uh, at our respective retail stores. And look, these these the Havana niggas are coming out. Look at this shit. Uh, yeah. Manny said, less hoes in here than a Havana, and we are closed. It's a Biden hoes, only Biden hoes. <laughs> oh, look at this shit. Damn, son. Look at Ed is a Bernie hoe. You just said yep. I feel the burn because I, I told you that I was pissing razors one time in the bathroom, and that wasn't true. So, so but welcome and thank you for joining us. And um, another story. Fuck all y'all. <laughs> And your fucking pint glass that you drop all the time. You know what I'm saying? Um, nonetheless, which brings me to my to my point. I, like you, Jose, like Roger, we were employed at the one time 
store that was known as Singular Wireless. And um, these motherfuckers, we are AOC's nudes. Damn, son. All right. Burning ho, get it right and get that checked. I just put a put Ponte Vix. Um, so I remember before that, uh, just to give people context, I met Jose in 2005 working at the mobile solution, which we were talking about before with, with Mowgli, with fucking Marcus. And uh, you guys, you guys should check out that episode because we we kind of spilled the beans on all that shit and how the double application commissions were coming through. Oh, Roger, you don't know about this. So check this out. When I met Jose, I had applied at the, the Stonewood Mall where you also worked. And they were it was a double kiosk. They had a singular AT&T kiosk on one end. Mm-hmm. And then on the other end, it was a T-Mobile uh, kiosk right right across from each other literally you could throw a football to each other right right so I go and apply this is this is a young dude named George he takes my application and I get a call from literally this dude named Edgar ah. and I'm like what the fuck hold on what's Manny talking shit about singular used to rip off the raza on Whittier all day long <laughs> wait I'm Edgar wait wait I would like to invoke my Fifth Amendment right. So fuck you. The one on Whittier and Montebello. You know that that man, that's that's the the man used to work at Cinnabon. He used to sell us sodas for a dollar, no seventy five cent. While we were working at Radio Check, we could say, "Oh, we got free Cinnabons for batteries." Yes, that was Manny. He was the manager. They would give us two day old Cinnabons. <laughs> Wait, what? They were they were like a day or two day old, so they didn't care about giving it away to us. Motherfucking man, you were feeding me two day old fucking Cinnabons, you asshole. <laughs> and he's wow. like, oh, wow. oh, Manny, Manny, Manny. <laughs> he said, yes, trades. <laughs> oh, Jose, I had no fucking idea I was eating two day old fucking Cinnabon. But they're still yeah, good. but they're good, huh? You ate them, you ate them well, huh? Still good. <laughs> so, fuck, man. Fuck you. Well, you didn't know? No! Well, somebody there told me, yeah, you can eat these boxes back here. They've been there for like two days. You can have them. All right, cool. No problem. <laughs> The, the the big the big six pack box of Cinnabons. Okay, you know? the truth comes out. Manny spilling the fucking me. Two day old Cinnabons better than all the merch at radio. She's like, oh, hey, don't make fun of our progressive scan DVDs, bro. <laughs> <laughs> our twelve channel police scanner. Don't even ask what was in the icing. Oh, oh, oh come on, <laughs> some extra sauce. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. So <laughs> fast forward, we we fucking we're employed by Singular and um oh my god, Manny. These motherfuckers, I knew the minute him and fucking Anthony tune in, they're just gonna start roasting us, dude. Look at this shit. Specialized you know, icing for the mall employee. Hey, but but uh, maybe let's see if you can ask, answer this question. Did he get in trouble for that broken tile? Because I broke that oh, tile shit. on the bottom with the remote control car. Oh, look at pecan bun extra nuts. Manny sauce. Wow. Fucking vergasos on your fucking Cinnabon, dude. Look at that shit, dude. <laughs> He's just like, toma, cabron, toma. Así, así. Damn. Man. Fuck y'all, man. You fucking... Two day old fucking center bun with fucking meckles on it and shit. <laughs> with jizz. Fuck all fucking, y'all, man. Fucking guy Fuck. gravy. Great, man. The truth comes out. See, this is like Operation Paperclip. <laughs> it's like Operation Northwoods, like MK Ultra. <laughs> Bitches. <laughs> Fuck that. Yellow cake. Oh my God. Look it. Cinnabon dicks for all the Radio Shack guys. Fuck. Yeah. dicks, bro. Brutal. God damn. Fuck all y'all. And I mean this with all the love. Fuck all y'all. But um, 
Yeah. So singular, we get hired. Oh, wait, 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 no, no, no. You were doing you were no, talking, no, no. let me backtrack actually. I was talking about the kiosk. I get yeah. hired there. Yeah. And then I go back to turn in. Um, I forgot what I turned in, Jose, and I met you. And I swear, dude, I met fucking Jose, and he looked like something out of a fucking daddy Yankee music video, bro. <laughs> All, all that was missing was uh, fucking uh, gasolina playing in the background, dude. That's all that was missing, dude. And I'm like, the fuck? So I turned in my application and Manny, thanks for ripping me off of my first cell phone. I didn't send it to you. It was Roger's fault. What? I didn't say shit, man. He, he, he always remember. It must have been. It must have been. Cheap. Sprint was cheaper. We got more commission off of Verizon. It and must have been Daniel or, 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 or Daniel. No wonder he was feeding us two day old fucking Cinnabon with fucking Manny Juice, dude. Manny Max. So I, I, I meet fucking um, Jose that day. And I think I, I literally started like the next day or something like that, all the day after. And he was in charge of training me. And this is an environment I'd never been exposed to. It was a kiosk. And my God, dude, I met Jose when he was 19. Right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Like 19, 20. I, I saw I saw the the his his potential. I'm like, wow, dude, this guy can he he was a draw like for his um I guess his early stages of fucking selling. I dude, I don't even know what you did before that, Jose. Where the fuck did you work? I worked at a restaurant, bro. <laughs> Where Margarita Margarita Jones? Yeah, I was a uh, I was yeah, a buster, and then I was a server. Huh? Yeah, I was a buster, and then a server. Well, how did that work out? It was all right, man. But you know, it long hours pay suck, tips suck. Wow. So, hey, that yeah. I feel attacked, Manny. How dare you? Oh yeah, he's talking about the people that sell you that shoe cleaner at the kiosk. <laughs> wow, that hurts, bro. That that hurts. But hey, uh, the shoes get clean though, and I, 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 I'm a sucker for it. I always buy it. I support the calls because they broke. So, yeah, like, oh yeah, man, cleans my shoes, huh? <laughs> Duke, I'll take Duke, that. Duke, Duke of Earl, Duke. shot my shoes. <laughs> Rogers like Duke. What? Oh fuck you, Manny. Nothing but sure high school kiosk. Better than singular. What a dick. Nothing but silver. Hey, but they had the chicks, bro. Was it was that remember, store right there by the escalator? Remember, huh? Yeah, remember Eileen that yeah. worked for Nicolas? She was the manager. She was the manager there, yeah. Yeah, and then Crystal, our friend Crystal was like, yeah, they they down. Down. What? They were trying to expose me for being the 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 pervert that I was. And I'm like, yeah, I am a pervert. So fucking what? <laughs> Bitch, Dude, you work at a strip club. <laughs> like, I'm gonna go visit you and give you some money, bitch. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh my god, my chick Daisy worked there. Remember Daisy, blonde Daisy? And then she yeah. went to the fucking uh she was a nutbag, dude. She was crazy. Cool, cool at the retail floor, but outside of that, oh no, watch out. <laughs> yeah, watch. I remember out. her. Yeah, I remember her. Yeah, I, I I would keep my distance with her. I'm like, whoa, slow down. Like you had like 13 vodkas. Slow down. And uh, cause I knew her her baby's dad, he was a cool guy. He was also the guy that would work there. And uh yeah, see, look, look at Manny. He's like, that chick was crazy. You think when me and Jose would go to Saddle Ranch, we would fucking see her there dancing on the stage. Yeah, right. good times. Did anyway, we? I don't remember. Yeah, those are those are fucking look at we used to party at Ibiza's fuck man. Dang. You remember Ibiza's uh Roger? Hey, you could be right there in Uptown Whittier. Uh, right before you hit Whittier College, where I used to attend, of course, for like you know, three days. Um hey, it was across from Rocky Colo Cafe, right in the corner. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, now yeah. I remember. Had a patio that place, and all that that place got closed down for prostitution. What? There would be girls selling themselves in there. At least that's what I heard. Man, what the fuck? And I'm over here spending my commission checks on bullshit. 
<laughs> I could have been going to Abiza's. It's funny too because you try to look in through the glass, like out from outside, because they yeah. had like, big old windows. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Fuck yeah, I do remember mm. that place now. Shit. All right, so this dude, you're taking shots that 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 just that that's not right, Manny. Not right. We used to party at Radio Shack in the back because we used to get hot sake for free downstairs at Ikari Sushi Bar. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. Okay. We'd sell shit drunk, which brings me to well, <laughs> let me go back to our story. Okay. So I meet Jose, and uh, at that point, we were smoking a lot of cigarettes, so we'd take a break like every five, ten minutes just to, I guess, Jose's thing was to get into like a a flow state, but this motherfucker was was a lover boy. He was an enamorado, bro. He would tell me about like three different chicks and his problems, and I'm just like, I look at him, I'm like, damn, bro, you just need to fuck everybody and shut the fuck up. <laughs> he was so emo and so like I was like oh man like let's go inside and sail let's go and um, I don't know how to like he was so like romantic and very sensitive and I uh, just like this motherfucker needs to needs to smoke crack and worship Satan come on let's do this shit <laughs> and we go inside the kiosk and um, we're assembling this team already. I remember it was me, him, that dude, George, I think got transferred or some shit like that. Yeah. Had, uh, the other guy, I forgot his name, bald. He nicknamed me Satanas. Frank. Uh, Frank. Yeah. Me and Frank did not vibe at all, dude. It was just nope. weird. That uh, was your arch enemy, bro. Yeah. And then the homegirl, Vanessa, which I was crushing on, but I knew my manager was about to get that. So I did very minimal and he knew it was harmless. And, you know, we, we went out and fucking partied, whatever. But our, our my tocayo used to blaze me out, dude. And that's how I would sell. And um, and he had the greenest weed, fucking Roger. I kid you not, man. It looked like like a Christmas tree. This it was, was the amazing. Cowboy? Yeah, believe it or not. And then he would come over to Jonathan's and blaze everyone out, get in his Mustang, and then just take off, go home. And show up the next day, like nothing, like it was like a reset. That's how I knew. I'm like, oh, dude, so that's a secret. He basically takes a psychological performance enhancement drug and just lets it rip, right? So um, for the life of me, Roger, I could not get Jose to smoke weed for a long time, dude. I could not. I could not. So I'm learning his techniques. Uh, and then uh, they sent me to the kiosk across, across the way. And I, I meet this beautiful Colombian girl named Erika, Erika Mikolta. Mm-hmm. Or just Roger, and she, but she had work done because she had two little holes in, in the lower side of her back right here. And uh, yeah, she had some kind of like, um, I don't know if there were butt implants or uh, a butt, oh, implant. butt implants. Yeah, her ass, really? her, and her ass was just too perfect. It looked like, yep. it looked like there's no such thing as an ass like that. And, but she was pretty at the same time. And her mom worked at the jewelry store right next to us and she was all done up too. I'm just like, fuck, I guess all you guys were on Columbia. Fuck. And um, that side of the store was very distracting. I could not get anything work done. Uh, so I'll have to go back. And, uh, but the thing is, the other kiosk, Roger, was in front of Victoria's Secret. <laughs> yep. And I was just like, God damn. So I'm like trying to, I'm like, fuck man, like, trying so hard but it's so distracting at the same time so i would take walks kind of cool off and i would go to the other kiosk in the middle of the mall where our homie um uh duties we call him duties and things art uh we call him prince he was at that kiosk with the the girl manager and i caught on to something which is very very interesting roger and uh, i don't i never done it i'm gonna let jose explain it because this is very very technical and at the same time it was easy to do i was wondering why these people were making fifteen hundred dollar two thousand dollar commission checks a month and i knew exactly how much they sold roger especially this guy named sergio who Uh looked like mexican 50 cent (laughs) yes all right so i I forgot the man the female manager's name that was pregnant at that uh, middle kiosk jose i can't remember for the life of me um, but she sent everyone to lunch at the same time. Total red flag. Like, why are you sending everyone out to lunch? Whatever. Yeah. And 
she and somebody else was helping her on two computers and she had just a stack of phones. Right. Right. And um, I'm like, what the fuck? And it's, it's crazy how that, uh, oh shit. Say what's up, Jose. It's what up? It's who? Sup, local. That's his real, that's his real name. You know that, right? <laughs> Robert Salah. Um, it's Styles, Robert Styles. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What up, man? Um, so, so I, I didn't know what was happening, Roger. So I, I don't know exactly how it was done. So, Jose, please educate the the corrupted community of of the internet as to how this was done and how everyone reaped the benefit of this. So, well, tell I, me, I don't know. If, uh, Roger's the customer, right? All right. Well, so you go up to hypothetically, Jose. I never took part, but um, basically, you knew how you know, you, I've observed how it was done, yeah. Um, so basically, somebody would come in, you know, let's say Roger had a family of five. Poor guy only qualified for two lines, no deposit. We would use uh, two terminals to, you know, basically run two applications at the same time simultaneously and boom, you magically, you still have the ability to activate two lines to force all four separate numbers and basically essentially two different accounts. What? So without, pay, without paying anything extra, like without paying an additional deposit. So usually like your deposit based on your credit history would run yeah. 150, 250, yeah, 500, 750. I think the highest was like $1,000. It yeah. just depends how bad your credit was. So now, here's, here's the thing is, would you have to log in with your credentials on both computers? I don't remember. Um, probably, or have somebody else do it. You would get the computer, you would get the commission because it's under your name. Uh, I think it's whoever rings it out on the, um, on the POS side of it for, yeah. for the company. It wasn't really for the, uh, like through the carrier. What the fuck? So that, yeah. that that's a very weird glitch, Roger, that that system had. And it went on for a while. Dealer. And here's the thing is the guys from T-Mobile corporate in the middle kiosk, they suspected something like that because they were always getting our customer service problems over there. Really? Yeah. So yeah that's how it suck, man. <laughs> we feel bad for those guys. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, and, and they're like, yeah, we're always dealing with you guys as bullshit, dude. And, you know, we legitimately activate them on this side. And I'm just like, yo, man, I don't even know what's going on. I can't I can't hit these quotas uh, because everyone else obviously has a method to it, and I'm just not down with the method. And that's when they're like, okay, we're going to try you at a different location. And Jose already went to the Lakewood mall, Roger. And um, he was there and he's like, yeah, there's more foot traffic here. And you can, you know, it's a different, it's a different fucking, um, a different environment. People, you know, it's Lakewood, dude. It's a blend of everything. Everyone wants to spend money here. Yeah. And uh, look at Robert's Sprint Transas. No, this is T-Mobile, Singular Wireless and AT&T. T-Mobile. So we go to Lakewood, right? And uh, at that point, I was kind of checked out already uh, out of that kiosk thing because I was like, okay, I, obviously, I'm not down with this. We had a really, really, I still talked to him to this day, but back then, he had this weird chip on his shoulder. His name was Jose Arvizu. Uh, he was from Arizona. He was just a dick. I mean, now he's 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 a stand-up comedian now. He's cool. Do you still talk to him? Yeah, I mean, he 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 got humbled a couple of times, especially with stand up. Oh, man. Yeah, you, know, you know how brutal that can be with stand up when you're first doing it. And uh, but he still he has like a side hustle that he does, and he hooks up people in the summer where he I think um, like uh, I forgot what he does. He sells like um, I don't know if it's mobile hotspot services or some shit like that. Um, but it's good. It's good commission, and you know with you know these times of people fucking staying at home and doing distance learning and shit he he made a pretty good amount of money 
But nonetheless, you know him, he wanted to be an actor and yada, yada, you know, his whole story. So he, um, I'm sure he knew about it, Roger, right? That whole and, uh, thing. His girlfriend was managing the kiosk right around the corner from that place. And she would always, she's like, I'm going to attempt six. I'm going to attempt nine. Um, but like the math didn't add up. So speaking of retail fucking hacks and secrets, that's exactly what TMS, the mobile solution, was doing. And it didn't stop, Roger. So after I had left, right, I joined a singular corporate, right? And before I get into that, um, uh, Jose was still working there. He lasted till about, when did you got hired in October, huh, Jose? Yeah, so I was there till like yeah. August. Something like that. Don't remember. I September. I remember him sending me a text message uh, saying, "Hey, man, I gotta get the fuck out of here. Like, you know, are you guys hiring?" And I got him into the kiosk in Pico, and I think Roger had fucking this motherfucker got the Whittier and in, in Montebello store. No, wait, didn't you do affordable like, portables afterwards? No, that was that was before I went to that kiosk. I, I got let go from affordable portables for. I know, a, I know we um, worked at the we worked at the Gigante kiosk. For, for a couple of weeks. No, that was Enlace Wireless. Remember them? Okay, because I know that's where I think that's where I met Jose. No, you didn't meet him there. That no. was 2003. 2003 is when we worked there and I got you a job there for like one month. No, it was two they weeks. Let us, they let, it was something like that. And they let us go like in uh, in the new year of 2004, Jose. Are you sure? And Jose, uh, you worked there, didn't you? No. no. He worked after when we built the new kiosk, the new corporate kiosk. Oh, right. before, before, that, okay. before that, there was in another kiosk uh, that was a third party. That was a franchise. Uh, what's Robert saying? Bro, associates and a manager at one of the stores would do transals. I caught those fucker fuckers of regularities. Yeah, I, pff, wait, you wait till you hear these. We're gonna get into a lot of lots of regularities, <laughs> All right? And um, so fast forward, um. I think it was around, fuck, I don't even remember when exactly, but uh, a, a homegirl, Donia, her hot ass friend, Jackie, was working at TMS at Montebello Mall, Roger, when they got their brand new kiosk there. And th she caught on to the same method and dude, she cashed out when she needed to, man. Because one, she was hot as fuck and she was a draw. And she just... Oh, <laughs> did he just freeze up? Just, he just froze. All right, there it is. And, all right, get him back. Um, everyone's back. Yeah, back. back. Every time but, you talk, there's like nasty static. Wait, Say right something. now? Okay, now it fixed itself. All right, it fixed itself. Oh, it, it's, dude, it, I've. It's, it's bandwidth at 10 49 p.m. What do you think people are doing right now? Get off my G. Oh no, Netflix. Get off my G. So, um, anyway, back to Jackie. Um, she told me exactly what she was doing, which is the exact same thing that Jose was explaining. Mm -hmm. And only her for her volume because of how how she looked and all the biceps, bro. Of course, they were gonna come to her. Because she's she's gorgeous. She had a you know she she was basically a nine and a half if you ask me. And uh, but she told me straight up she's like, man, if you're, I'm making like thirty five hundred dollars a month on just commission. And I'm just like, what? She's like, yeah, like you know they they have me run, you know, uh, apps on two computers, and that's how I do it. I'm just like taking a sip of my coffee, going, uh -huh. you better get out of there when you can. Because rumor already had it that um, there was already like, I think it was the better business bureau was already investigating or departments of weight, weights and measures mm -hmm. already coming and investigating. So, um, so fast forward, you know, that shit, uh, obviously TMS went down. Everyone knows that. Mm -hmm. um, and our old pal Uzi was part of all that too. And I think he cashed out when he could. Hmm. Yeah. That 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 is a prime example of what the video was asking. Like, 
retail secrets and hacks and are they uh, are they short lived they are because that brings me to my next uh topic which all three of us worked for this fucking company which is singular wireless let me ask you guys this question when you guys worked there uh, and me and Jose spent a lot of time. We spent almost a whole year working by ourselves there with, uh, with, with Sergio, who's the last of the Mohicans. He's going on year 16 as an RSC at at and yeah, I can't believe it. And uh, well, be there to the fucking end of time. He's looking, he's looking to escape. I told him if he wanted to come on the podcast, but he's got other things going on. You know him. He's probably smoking a cigarette, drinking Starbucks, and talking on his yeah. Bluetooth. That's it. And um, <laughs> I let you know. He's like, "Hey, this guy will smoke. Come on, let's go." Say, I'm, I don't smoke no more. Right. 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 Hey, how's your girlfriend, Jose? <laughs> you, huh? Oh my god! Oh wait, wait. We got to tell the story, man. I, I still laugh so hard to this day when I hear. I remember that story. Tell the story when we're working at Gigante. And you guys were in the can, like you guys were in the restaurant. Like you went to use a head. <laughs> How could I forget, dude? There, there's actually two stories, Roger. So, oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint the most perfect picture for you, Roger. Okay, Sergio had this habit of going outside and smoke right where the the sliding doors would come out. Yeah, he would smoke and drink his coffee and talk on the phone as as I was fucking describing, right? And he's always talking with his hands and shit like that. And I remember clearly he was using his fucking microaggressions to talk and he burned someone with a cigarette butt that passed by, bro. A little fucking vice lady, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it was... No, because they could. there's terminals in each four corners of the fucking kiosk, right? So I was on this side watching fucking YouTube videos or some shit because we were trying to play DJ by mi- mixing YouTube videos. Me and yeah, I remember that. <laughs> he would play Lime. Like, that was the Robert Stiles mix. I was trying to emulate. Kind of fucking, yeah, but it's via YouTube. We're trying to cue it up on the mouse and shit. Like, it was fucking funny. Why, you're trying to keep up with Ritmo Latino? Yes, because, dude, they were playing the same fucking shit all the time, dude. I'm like, God, shoot me, bro. That was annoying, dude. I couldn't stand it. Rebelde to fucking, oh, God, I don't even know. It was like the worst pop music you can think of, dude. That was so annoying. I'm yeah. like, please it, it, play the theme song of Carousel if you can, dude. Just get this fucking loop out of my head, dude. And uh, so Sergio burned this lady with his fucking cigarette butt, right? Hey, yeah. that's all I heard. And then he's apologizing. I don't know what the fuck he's saying. He's trying to apologize and talk on the phone at the same time, dude. And uh, he, he's, I, I don't know. He's brazen. He just apologizes and just leaves. He's like the fucking, um, I don't know, dude. It's, it's the most bizarre thing ever. It's, it's intriguing at the same time. So whenever he had to go take a shit, um, he would just fucking, you know, usually you take off your stuff, you put it down. He's like, hey, I'm going to go on. He was about to just throw everything on the desk. Right. And he'll just walk out and he, he walks like fucking like, like, I don't know, dude, like Gumby, bro. All these, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> this is so fucking back, weird walk. Back, by, by the furthest register in the back, right. There's like a jewelry store that, you know, you check the check cashing thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. On the order section, then the jewelry store. And then you go around the corner in the bathrooms right there. And, um, I'm like, oh, I got to go take a piss too. So I go and, you know, it's always like an adventure. You go to the restroom. I say hi to all the cute register chicks, whatever. And, um, you know, it just, it was really tight, dude. We all knew each other. It was fucking dope. And uh, I remember clearly one of the paisanos, I always, you always used to call me Gallo. Oye, Gallo, ¿qué onda? And I'm like, I go, voy a tirar agua. Yeah, ese anda tirando, sepa que. Una, una troca de lodo, sepa que la chingada. Cause he had just came out, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, I mean, he, he was basically telling me like, go check on him, right? And I'm like, all right, so I, I go and piss, and I could hear him, and I just see his feet like this, right, like that. His feet are like this, and 
I'm like, hey, you all right? Sergio, are you all right? Yeah, hey, fine. <laughs> Sergio, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> feet like, that. like, literally, his feet like levitate off the fucking floor. <laughs> And I'm like, fuck, fuck. I go, flush, dick. He's like, nah, I'm not going to fucking flush. So I grab a bunch of napkins and I wet them. And I go, I went up and went, boom, I hit him with a wet towel, dude. Damn, what the fuck, dick? And he comes out with his pants down. And I'm like, oh, you forgot to wipe. And dude, he lifts up his pants, washes his hand, and walks out. I guess that's how, that's why he walks like that, then. Uh, I'm like, you nasty fuck. You didn't even wipe. No, nah, it was a ghost shit. <laughs> the fuck? It was a ghost shit. I'm like, no, I don't think so. That thing probably just hid under the bowl. You didn't see it, bro. And I just fooled you. I think you had no shit in your asshole. <laughs> what the fuck? And yeah, so he goes back and he's, 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 he always, he always had this lean at the kiosk like that. Right. <laughs> that was basically like his 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 fucking oh my god. He had his, this uh, let me get to the next story. Nadia, yes, oh, Nadia. supposed to be about filming music, but we started talking about retail hacks and whatnot. <laughs> Thanks for joining. This shit's gonna get funny, I promise. Oh, so Sergio had this swag like this, Sergio. I mean uh, uh Roger like this. Had his Bluetooth headset, and it was always fucking beaming, you know, like you know that. Fucking yeah, Motorola one. Yeah, they were, yeah, yeah. And this motherfucker would just—he could sell like dog shit to a fucking gardener. It was ridiculous, dude. Literally, like packaged dog shit to a fucking gardener. They'd be like this. Yeah, I come to play you later. Whatever. That's all I heard, and I'm just like this going. And even Jose's like. <laughs> And then uh, he brings out like, oh yeah, I ain't gonna act today, fine. And I'm like, no, Dick, I'm gonna act. He goes, no, I ain't gonna act. Today, I'm gonna act. <laughs> yeah, he would. And he he would get like five phones, dude, and just like literally like sp- activate the fuck out of them. The people are just like this, like <laughs> basically listening, listening to him talk, Roger. And he'd get him out. And then, ah, 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 and then just walk on and spark a cigarette, like perfectly timed as the double doors were opening like that. And you get on the floor, start talking. And his customers are just walking right by and going, what the <laughs> fuck? Like it was, it happened so fast, Roger. So fucking fast. It was what amazing. Was now I know why he's lasted so long. It, was his return was ratio high? Long? No, very little. Yeah. And if it was, it was for an exchange, and he would just exchange and get him the fuck out, and do the same thing. It was a method, dude. And you know, me and Jose, obviously, I mean, he was the main one of the main uh sales leader, and then it was it was me and Jose, and then Silos, Carlos de los Santos. Um, but at, at one point, um speaking of retail hacks, I think it was when we had this contest in 2006 to see who was going to get transferred to the mighty Montebello kiosk. Right. Okay. And I'm just like, that's when, you know, rest in peace, our, our manager, Berto, uh, I, the, I didn't even meet, meet him in person yet. And he calls me, he goes, Hey dickhead. And I'm like, what? He's like, Hey dickhead, you going to sell us some shit or what? I'm like, is this Berto? He said, no, dick, it's Jesus. <laughs> and I'm like, well, Jesus Christ, I need some activation, so if you can send some hell, please. He goes, well, tell you what, you hit at least six in that piece of shit fucking kiosk? He's like, I'm going to take you out to BJ's. He's on me. I'm like, it's not even open yet, though. Oh, it's open, all right. I'll make it open. <laughs> so before rehearsal dinners in 2007, um, they already had the, the lines open and he would go into the back and fucking, I don't know what he did, bro, but the, the bar wasn't even built yet, Roger. And we yeah. would go and drink with the security guards. What? Wow. Crazy shit, man. Yeah. He had a way with words and with people. It was so fucking intriguing. So 
I win by one activation, and it's because I discovered a retail hack, which was we what we used to call Jedi's. Roger, you know what a Jedi is? Jedi, Jedi. It sounds familiar, but I can't remember that shit. Go ahead. A retail hack, of course, of of singular wireless back in 2006. Uh, we, at this point, we are we are already in the process of getting uh, transitioning to AT and T. I remember this, but a Jedi was if you were you're like fuck i'm i'm about to zero out i'm not gonna sell shit um you'd activate a prepaid and keep it mm, okay so because if you I wanted to hit guys. a specific target for the day for the month for the week we used to do that yeah i remember prepaid. that and if they questioned you for it i'm like no i need i need a personal line that's not on a contract uh, because I don't want any personal, like you, he gave us a legitimate reason to buy these prepaid phones, prepaid SIM, SIM cards. Mm-hmm. And um, the main one was like, well, you know, I, I, I have a side business and then he would, he would bring in like fake LLCs for you to have or whatever, just in case they asked. I was just like, what the fuck? This guy had it down, dude. He had it down. And um, that was one retail hack. The second one I discovered um, was the, uh, and I don't know if you guys could could attest to this, but uh, the SIM card purchase, the SIM card replacement purchase. Which was 10 bucks, wasn't it? No, it was 25 bucks. Do you remember this, Jose? Yep. Because see, after I had oh, left. Wasn't that because yeah, you had to activate so, it? Yes. So I remember specifically when we would ring up a SIM card, it would ring up at zero. Mm -hmm. So we had to manually change the price of the SIM card at the Montebello kiosk. What we used to do. I remember that. Oh, yeah, it's 25 bucks, but it's cash and we need exact change. Easy. A 20 and a five. Boom. Activate your SIM card. That's it. We need, we're not even giving them a receipt and that comes off the inventory. Because remember, we had to scan each and every fucking SIM card during inventory is annoying. Yeah. And um, in our register, we had an envelope right under it with the letters BF, beer funds. So you would have to let the, the, the committee know that I just, acu- I just, I just accumulated 25 bucks for the BF folder. Okay. And so the, the a witness would be like, okay, BF folder's coming out. You would insert the $25, put it back in. Cool. That was basically like the, the bar tab money, right? Because BJ's was just about to open and we couldn't wait. And we wanted the biggest tab we can afford so we can. And we did, man. And it was fucking buck wild, man. I broke my phone that night. I remember that. Um, so that was another hack. Uh, and then I, I, the only other hack I remember is just clocking each other in and out. Um, <laughs> we used to call it clockage. <laughs> and I got caught one time by Celos and, uh, Celos is like, where are you? And I'm like, I'm taking a shit. He goes, yeah, but didn't you clock in? I go, I did. I go, but I had to go take a shit. He's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, he's like, because I've been here since seven in the morning counting phones and I didn't see it. I go, you weren't there at seven in the morning. And he's like, really? He's like, you're going to tell me I wasn't here at seven in the morning? I'm like, I didn't see you when I clocked in. He said, like, how come you're not locked in one of the computers? He's like, it's Mario. And I'm just like, what? So I'm like, I'm taking a shit. Clearly, I'm not taking a shit. I'm pulling up in the parking lot. I'm hungover as fuck. Right? Mm-hmm. So I had to find like, Literally, I'm like, oh fuck! I, I, I'm afraid he's saying, oh yeah, I'm at the kiosk, but he was a trickster. He was at the inventory room outside, and he would see your car and bust it, right? So what I did was I literally parked at across the street where the holiday parking is, and I had to walk. And literally, it was like Ace Ventura, dude. I was just like going through fucking trees, make sure he wasn't around. <laughs> and then I made it to the fucking restroom at uh, Robinson's May before it was being turned into a Macy's. Right. And um, 
dude i was like fuck and then he's like he calls me again he's like, Why? i'm like dude i'm i'm wiping can i call you back and uh i go and and uh the motherfucker's not there he's not at the kiosk dude and i'm like i call him back. i'm like hey i thought you were here he goes no nah, i'm just fucking with you i'm at home i'm like well what are you talking about i clocked in he goes dude you know i have remote access to check if you guys clock in and out right I'm like, yeah, that's kind of creepy. Why would you want to do that? And he's like, because I saw your Havana house last night. That's why. What? What a dick. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, so? She goes, and you, I said hi to you, and you didn't even see me because I saw you cross-eyed. And he's like, I knew you weren't going to make it on time to work. And I'm like, you were at Havana House yesterday. He's like, dude, first you tell me I'm not at the kiosk and then I'm not at Havana House. Yeah. I go, you're not at the kiosk. You're not here. <laughs> he's me, bro. And he's like, ah, okay. And he hangs up. I'm like, fuck. fuck I, now I, know why warned, I know why you warned him, warned me about him when you got transferred to my store. And yeah. he's a fucking dick, dude. Like, he got me in trouble with the manager because... Yeah. I don't know. He was on or something. Fuck, dude. I, Here, I, here's I, the thing, and you know, I mean, I don't talk to the guy anymore. And quite frankly, I never really had. It was just a friendly competition between him, between him and I. Um, even off uh, away from work, he had like this weird arrogance about him. Yeah. That I just did not vibe. I'm just like, dude, how do I even told him one time at the kiosk in front of Jose? I'm like, dude, how do you have friends if you drink fucking choco meal? <laughs> And he's like, I'm like, dude, you drink chocomil. Who the fuck wants to be friend? He goes, he's like, dude, it's Pancho Pantera. And I'm like, yes, when you were like five. I go, why don't you grab some of these Rockstar Energy drinks that I'm drinking, dude? He goes, no, I don't drink that shit. I'm like, ay, pobrecito. And he would get mad, dude. He would get big mad. <laughs> you told me this story and, that he, he tried to hit on this girl. And she was like 17 or something. And her brother came by and, and threw acid on his truck. Yeah. Do you remember that, Jose? That what? That um, it, I forgot who it was. Um, but, uh, oh, Maribel. Maribel and what's her name? Um, our old friend. Um, she, I yeah, believe she, she wound up coming out. Uh, yeah, yeah. What was her name? Nayeli, something like that. Belly, something. But yeah. Maribel was underage. She was really yeah. pretty. She was like a pageant girl, bro. And yeah. Silos fucking approached her, and the brother worked at Gigante. Yeah. And okay. the, the 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 brother was cool, but he was he was a little bit gangster, right? And um, yeah, I guess he poured acid on his fucking hood, but he denied everything. He was smart. He was like, dude, I don't know what the fuck this was talking about. He has no evidence. He's It's all allegations. I go, but I'm going to punch his ass in the face for trying to hit on my underage sister. So he didn't deny that he yeah. wanted to fuck up. Right? But he he did, he did deny, like, hey, that should, that's not me. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. When, in fact, you kind of put two and two, two, and two together, and it was him of no it's allegedly it was him um but no he was that type of dude that i know yeah, yeah. that's how he was when when we were at um it was singular still and i was working at the montebello and whittier store right there by the, across the street from the wells fargo yeah and i remember because that's where um me and jose had our training remember in the back yeah. room in we the back room, we did our training together, man. We did our training oh, together, yeah. Right, where yeah. they would have the, not the boot camps, but like the the district, like the the store meetings. The store meetings, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was funny because that store, the way it was, the entrance. Most people use the back entrance with the parking lot, and it yeah. had two restrooms: a customer restroom and an employee restroom. And. Um, uh, we used to have our employee restroom all clean and everything, and the, we didn't give a fuck about the customer restroom. I mean, people would take a <laughs> piss, dude. Like seriously, it would just be, we would just like wipe it down. And fuck that, we wouldn't go in there. We're like, fuck that, I'm not sitting in there. But uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> we had a manager. 
uh, all the managers there hated me. They didn't like the way I worked. Um, uh, it's guy Oscar. He was cool in a way, but, um, we got in a fight like argument when he was getting transferred. But when, um, Marco got there, dude, that guy, he did not like me at all. And that's when Carlos showed up and you're like, yeah. oh, dude, you're going to have Carlos for your assistant manager. It's like, fuck, I feel sorry for you, man. I'm like, why? What's up with him? He's like, it's a total fucking dick. It's like, really? And um, he actually showed up in plain clothes, like, like dressed like a customer, right? And I'm busy yeah. walking around doing my shit, and like I'm helping people, and he's just standing there, like I didn't notice him. But then he comes up to me, and he's like, "Hey, how's it going?" I'm like, "Hey, what's up, man? I'll be with you in a moment." He's like, "Oh no, 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 it's cool. You know, I've been standing here for five minutes, and none of y'all greeted me." I'm like. Uh, dude, you know I'm 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 busy right now, sir. I'll I'll be with you as soon as I'm I'm ready. Okay, we have other people that are willing to help you too if you're just willing to wait because we get busy. You know, he's like, oh no no no. See, I'm Carlos de los Santos. I'm gonna be I'm your new assistant manager. I'm like, yeah. So why are you dressed up in jeans and stuff? Are you here to work? You know, and he's like, no, you guys just didn't do what you're supposed to do. Like, dude, you're not even. I was like, this guy wasn't even on the clock, and he's already trying to reprimand me and all the other people that were working there. It's like, what sounds about fuck? right. Like, That's the kind of fuck? he's that kind of dude, man. Yeah, and he, I'm he's like, that kind of dude. And that I just knew that first impression. I was like, shit, dude, I'm gonna fucking hit this guy with the fire extinguisher one day because I know he's gonna get on my fucking nerves. <laughs> <laughs> And this was when we had we had like little desks, like little tables and chairs. Like we had our chairs and computers, and it was like you know, like in a row of the store. So when you walk in, everybody was lined up on the side of the store, and we would be sitting there, and we're like, "Hi, hey, welcome to see you. Can we help you." And we're like, "Oh yeah," and you sit down. And it, anyways, we had our own computers and stuff. And on downtime, I would just browse websites, you know. And I was on a website for uh, Final Fantasy, a game that I would play online, you know. And I'm just, you know, just reading some shit, reading some updates. And this guy is behind me, like, like over my shoulder, sneaks up, dude. Like, I couldn't even hear him. The dude was just sneaking. And he's like, yeah, what are you reading? I'm like, he's like, what are you reading? I'm like, oh, hey, I'm just checking up on this thing that I'm going to go to, you know, because I was buying tickets to go to the Santa Monica convention for that shit. And I'm like, I'm just checking out what's going on, when it is, and like, oh, that's pretty cool, dude. It's like, so you're into that? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's pretty awesome. But did you do you know what it's all about? Like, I was literally like getting into a conversation with him about it, and this guy was being like, acting like sincere. I'm like, he's like, all right, but just make sure he's like, just make sure you don't um try to keep it off of work time. All right, so just like you know, get on something else. I'm like, all right, dude, no problem. I'm just logging it off right now. It was only like two minutes, and he's like, okay, cool. Five minutes later, dude, Marco calls me to the back. He's like, he's like, hey, Marco wants to see you. I'm like, all right, cool. So I go to the back in the inventory and straight up, I'm like, hey, what's up, dude? You want to see me? He's like, this was his, these were his words. So you think Final Fantasy is going to help you reach your quota? I was like, what? Like, what are you talking about? He's like, why are you on these websites? I'm like, like, dude, what the fuck? And I look at Carlos, like I look at him. And he was like, just like, and I'm like, fuck. Yeah, he's that kind of dude. He's that guy. Dick, dude, I can't believe he would fucking do that. It's like, it's like, seriously, like, I can't believe that. I'm like, dude, I'm just, you know, it's downtime. There's nothing going on, you know, just trying to manage my time. So that way I can do it quickly, like get stuff done whenever I can. It's like, you know, you know, you know, you're, you're supposed to do that when you're not working. You can do that at home. I was like, look, dude. Am I in trouble or are you going to get write me up or anything like that? He's like, no, no. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go back outside. And I look at him. And I'm like, it's like next time you want to talk to me about something, you better make sure that you want to talk to me about something serious because, you know, like you don't have a friend in me. I told him you're going to be my, my boss. I'll be your employee. That's it. So don't talk. To, I'm like, don't talk to me when you want to talk to me at all anymore. So I just fucking went and I sat back down and I did my shit, dude. That guy is fucking deceiving and conniving, dude. And, he, and I know, oh, know. he's totally stuck up. I'm like, fuck, dude. I was so ready to fucking throw my chair at him because of what he did. I was like, I can't believe he fucking did that shit, dude. 
Yeah. I don't know if Jose ever had any encounters with them. I don't know if he had. Yeah, a couple, but I mean, it kind of was like, you know, I say out of you where you said, you said on mine type of thing. I didn't really yeah. want to butt heads. We did butt heads a couple of times, but I'm just like, all right, man, I know how you are. It's, I'm just going to fucking you know, you now. Uh, Jose's arch nemesis was actually a female that worked with us, man. Her name was yes. yes, homegrown Pico girl that just she was a thief on the sales floor, man. What? Yes, her husband was cool. He worked at Verizon, yeah. but she was a whole different level of. She didn't give a fuck, dude. And then she would try to like spin it like, oh, she didn't know. Like, oh, I had no idea. I'm just like, bullshit. Like she would steal oh. your sales? Oh, yeah, yeah. man. All the fucking time. All the fucking time. Fuck. It was like, you out. I think she ratted us out on a few things, man. And I was like, what? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Jesus. Shut your mouth. She had ratted us out for uh, not clocking out to go across the way to in and out because we were going to bring the food back. Mm-hmm. And then clock out. And um, I think it was Ramon Corral who had called her. And he was like, well, what the fuck right. are the guys at? What are the guys at? He goes, oh, they went to lunch and they didn't clock out. And blah, 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 blah. And, blah, 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 blah. and I'm just like, this bitch is singing like a bird, bro. Yeah. I know, I know somebody. Like, you have no business saying anything. Just say we're out to lunch. Okay. That's it. You have no personal right? game. No lateral game. Shut the fuck up. This was in Pico? Yeah. Okay. Believe it or not, that kiosk at one point, uh, it was me, Jose, Sergio. Well, me and Sergio were the very first ones. And then Jose came afterwards. Carlos de los Santos. We had Joanna, who is still Sergio's yeah. friend to this day. Yeah. And she came from the fucking call center. So she had intelligence access. Oh, and all this yeah. she do was play Tetris all day, dude. She didn't wow. give a fuck. Dude, no, yeah. I, would, I, would, I would go there and I would play Jose and Marvel vs. Capcom all the time. Yeah. And then yeah, uh, Galindo, um, uh, what, what's her name? Um, Brenda. Brenda, and then, yeah. And, uh, occasionally, our, our manager would show up, Ramon. Yeah. There was eight of us right. in that small little fucking kiosk, man. Eight of us. Four terminals. Wow. So at one point, like we had to do manual activations where we had to write stuff out on on the the applications, right? Mm-hmm. And we had to wait for someone to free up a computer. And um, same thing, like with the pay stations too, they would come up and make a payment. And uh, it got so bad to the point, Roger, where like Ramon would tell us, "Oh yeah, be sure like you know you get the receipt, and then you log into their account and uh, make sure like the." The payment posted and uh you know I, I, you know you know sell some shit you know just do your fucking job you know do your fucking job bro and um you know that's it do, and, you, uh, do your fucking job dude. yeah like like literally i'm like oh you know buenas tardes whatever and then uh, and they're like what the fuck like it doesn't go in right away and yes, it does. And like, okay, like yeah, we had to make up some bullshit lie. Like, oh, we've been having a delay, blah, blah, blah. And then, oh, you know, you qualify for three more lines. Oh, you know, you qualify for one more line. Oh, and it was, it was, it was one of those where like, okay. Cause aside from the Montebello kiosk, that, that whole area just sold itself, man. We did not have to try so hard. I mean, the only distraction of course was just the girls, man. Yeah, because um, it was just a house of testosterone for a while, man. And then we started hiring girls, and that kind of like built more competitiveness amongst us. Because now the men that are used to coming to our kiosk to come and fucking, you know, gawk at chicks at the kiosk, were now coming to the girls because we had girls at the kiosk. And it's just like, what the fuck? And I'm just like, we had, at one point, we had this girl named Arena. She was cute, but she was, she was a bitch. Um, uh, that's straight up. Uh, we had uh, Lizeth, 
which fuck man, she was a brat. She was annoying. Uh, and then my friend Jerry's sister, Kimberly, uh, Kimmy, she was cool, very quiet, but she had her own style. Um, and then Jenny, Jenny Osuna, dude, the one that had that psycho ass fucking baby's dad that stabbed her in the leg. Wow. I, I was going to fight because he called me a bitch to my face. I didn't even know what the fuck I did. And he called me. I and said, remember yeah. that, bro. Yeah, he called me and said he had my address. I'm like, well, come over, fool. I'll, I'll be waiting for you outside, man. And my mom gets all mad. No, I'm not. And then uh, what happened was um, she, I don't know. I think she got transferred some shit. But later afterwards, we got this gorgeous girl named Joanna, Puerto Rican girl. She was all tatted up. She had a banging body. She was poor girl, man. This is after I, I had, you know, gotten suspended and was put under investigation for something I didn't do. Um, she was fucked, dude. She was, she was. I'm pretty sure, like, if she would have filed so many law, sexual harassment lawsuits uh, uh, for uh, to all of those guys who were working there, dude, she would have fucking got a fat settlement. Really, Chris, you were hiding at my house. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, dude! And at times I did believe it or not. So, so yeah. So fast forward. Um, I the only other problem that that I got into was when um, I would demo phones and take them. Like you know, obviously I was obviously going to bring them back, but I, um, re- I remember when you brought the razor. Yes, exactly. So Chris, What's up, Chris? What's up, brother? I remember um, you brought that razor over the razor, the first Motorola razor. I'm like, what the yes. fuck is that? You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah no, here's, the, here's, the thing, here's the thing though. Um the Motorola Razor debuted when I was still at affordable portables. And I had won a Motorola Razor through a contest because I hit like major quota that month. And uh, the the way, dude, you're going to trip out, Jose. The way I hit quota was I was posting MySpace bulletins to come to the store to activate. Uh, (laughs) I I was posting MySpace bulletins. And that that was it. All of, I activated like the whole entire city of Pico, dude. (laughs) It was fucking amazing, dude. From... From the when, cholo to the punk rockers to the old to the old older senior citizens, dude, they all came to my store, dude. When did uh, you transfer over to uh you didn't you didn't you work at the Beverly store for a while? Mm-hmm. So initially when I got hired by Singular, I started at the Montebello kiosk when okay. Mr. Pedro Infante was <laughs> the fucking the manager. And um him and you know his bed buddy Joe Gomez were fucking whatever. And they, had, they had a really good sales team. That, but there was just one dude that I just did not vibe with, uh, and that's how I met uh, Jose's old boss, Chris Castaneda, because um, we started we started at that kiosk together. Because they were either going to send me or him to the Gigante kiosk, so they sent me instead because they knew like if I were to stay, I was not going to get along with that dude, Joe, Joe Al, that was his name. Um, very snarky, very arrogant, very, I didn't like him, dude. Just, just his face alone. He had a very punchable face, dude. You know, I just want to punch your face. And you're like, dude, I just want to punch your face, bro. Like you pissed me off just by looking at you and, uh, <laughs> it was just fucked up, but it was true. And, um, so I started there, Roger, and I got before the kiosk was open. They're like, "You have, we're gonna have, you're gonna have to start working with your new manager." And I'm like, "Who's my new manager? His name's Ramon Corral. He's the manager at the Beverly and uh, Montebello store." And I'm like, "Oh, I'm like the AT and T store." He goes, "Yeah, it's a blue store. It's turning into singular." Yeah. I'm like, "Okay," and that's when I discovered that my cousin Denise was working there. So, and then I met her. I met. Homegirl Danya, I met Lupe Carbajal. Um, I don't think Roger remembers this story. I gotta refresh his memory. Fuck you, Jose. 
Uh, no, he knows the story. We talked about it at our uh, drunken pre New Year's get together. Yeah. Yeah. Memory shot. I don't think he remembers. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I was Christian uh, Gonzalez, who I still talk to to this day. Uh, it was, um, what was, what was his name? Uh, oh yeah. Carlos de los Santos was there too. Yeah, that's right. Um, and, then, and then, um, who else came in there? Um, there was one more person. Oh, Carlos. He was the Cuban guy. He was assistant manager. That guy was fucking amazing, dude. He was probably one of the best closers I've ever seen in my life. And I think a lot of like his Cuban like swagger was responsible for that that reason but he smoked a lot dude and he ate like shit and he had i can hear his breathing he was he was in great shape dude but he i can tell him just like dude this guy smoked way too much he's gonna have breathing problems later on down down in his his time man and then roger when the kiosk was being built we had to fill it up with inventory get it working connect shit um and it was just me and sergio and that's when we got we we had the grand opening of the Gigante Kiosk with two employees. And we literally worked seven days a week. Literally. Like, we we had the choice of working six. But at that point, I'm like, I had nothing to do. I'm just going to go work. So we would just, I would just kick it there. And if I activated, I activated. If not, then, you know. Yeah, I, I, I honestly I like that. That food. place was pretty fun. You know, when it was back when it was uh, not AT&T. And I was working. Yeah, I was. And, and that's yeah. when you know, our, our co-worker, Stephanie, had big old titties. And <laughs> it was just, it was fun, dude. I mean. You broke my stool, Dick. I have no idea what you're talking about. I used to have this little stool. <laughs> you know, I don't know if Jose knows the story. But uh, when I worked there, I was sick and tired of always standing. So I had this little stool that, you know, my dad had fixed up. And it was like, it's basically a, you know, a, a milking stool, you know, the kind of stool you use to milk a cow because it's so small. <laughs> so you would sit down and like, you would literally be able to sit like this on the kiosk, you know, with like, you know, watching the customers go by and just say, how's it going? What's up? You know, anyways, this asshole one day <laughs> was sitting on it. And I don't know what the fuck, you know, we're just like, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know if it happened while I was there. Keep talking. But I'm going to get some hot water. I just remember like, like a, a crashing sound and I hear him go, Oh fuck. And I turn around the dudes on the floor. You just see his, the, his forehead sticking from like the back of the kiosk, you know? And I'm like, what the fuck happened? Dudes on the floor. My stool is just like in pieces. Like the, the- <laughs> Dick, what the fuck did you do? He's like, oh, I just sat down fool. I'm like, yeah, man, I told you don't sit your big ass bubble butt on that thing, dude. It's like, ah. Uh. And people were, the other people who were working there were kind of mad too because they liked it. They also liked to use it, you know, because one, yeah. it was really small. So you couldn't tell it that was it was like there. the only stool we had. And yeah. uh, or else your ass has to fucking stand up for the rest of your shift. Yeah, yeah. I used to always make work, like, I used to always find ways of making work a little bit easy for everybody. Like when we worked at Radio Shack, uh, my pops got us those mini fridges and we put it in the back. So oh that my God. Yes. We, were we told literally... our manager, like we told our managers like, yeah, we're only use it for soda, you know, and water. But in reality, we, we would put like sake and beer, like hidden in the back. And we would just, the minute he, the minute, the minute we told him that Jose, mm. and he's like, soda, water. Okay. And then before you know it, like we saw whiskey bottles in there and we saw yeah. Damn. Uh, vodka and I'm just like, okay, I, I guess we, we're going to have some parties right here. Yeah. Oh, Alex, I, 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 totally, I totally blew you off, man. We're doing great, man. I know he asked about how we were doing. Um, I hope you're doing well too, Alex. I know you work at the mighty Walmart in Pico and, you know, hope you're doing well. He says, sit down and milk customers for phone sales and accessories. <laughs> Yeah, man, dude. So, so, so um, let's go going, back to the hacks, to, like the shit that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, this yeah. is going like we can go on forever with this. Yeah, shit. but let me get some water. Keep talking. Yeah, go for it. Like, when um, when I was doing the singular, 
we got in trouble. Well, this I think this is what happened before Singular got in trouble. Remember when Singular got in trouble when a uh, customer, I think this happened in Seattle somewhere, they found a garbage bags full of contracts. Like, you know. Whoa, are you serious? Remember we used to fill out contracts manually and shit like that? Mm. And it would have all their information, name, address, social, everything. Somebody found like garbage bags full of that shit on the side, like outside. And she actually like looked in and she found her name and she, oh, hey, this is my information. What the fuck? So we used to have the contracts in boxes, like the Iron Mountain boxes, but they weren't. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Our, our manager, in order for us to, um, I'm going to put this, make better commission or make better sales is here. Uh, go through these old contracts and look for outdated, um, you know, add-ons like outdated text messaging or outdated internet service and shit like that and call them up and upgrade them and you'd get the commission for it, you know, because oh, you're no. changing it. So we would do that. Like I would, I hated doing it, but we'd have to, yeah. so I would go through them and I'm like, yeah. Yeah, so we would cold call these people, dude, like just straight out on their cell phones. I'm like, yeah, you know, this is, we're just letting you know that you have like an older plan and you can get more text messaging for 10 cents less or shit like that, you know? Like, okay, mm. yeah, set me up, set me up. Like, all right, cool. All right, you're all set. And we would do the change. Boom, we get the commission for it, you know? Because working back then, it was good commission. Singular Wireless had really good Oh, commission. yeah, definitely. You know which one was the best one? You know which one was the best one? So, you, I don't know if you remember, but when we got Telligent's access, yes. and I, everybody yeah, did it. Sure, sure one point. Had it. Yeah, so there was a plan where I think they were paying like 20 bucks, and I think they were getting like um, 1,000 or 1,500 text messages. And then the limited one came out for the same price. Yes. We'd be flipping them. We didn't even call them. Just like, oh, okay, yeah. where's the answer to you? And it's like, well, why call them? They're literally paying the same price and getting limited back. We're actually saving them money. Yes. And, uh, we would do that constantly because it was the you had to hit a certain dollar amount per metric. And yeah. we we're hitting that all day, man. We're like, okay, yeah. kind of hit metrics. All right. Everybody gets intelligence. Everybody's flipping features and stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Every day, man. We got to like I, I clearly of remember, I think it was before I went to Montebello is when we had already had access to to this Citrix app, because that's exactly what it was. Uh, it, it went by the name of Intelligence. And I clearly remember, I'm like, okay, I caught on to something because a red flag came up where there was a local customer that I flipped and that customer came back like, hey, wait a minute, like, why am I seeing these extra charges on my on my plan? And I'm just like, oh shit. And it wound up being a pro rate charge. Cause you oh. did if you flipped anything yeah. instantly in the middle of a the bill cycle, cycle yeah. you would get the proration. So I'm like, oh, close call. Yeah, look, luckily it was only like a $4.99 like text plan or some shit like that. And as soon as I figured that out, we went ham at the kiosk, man. And then that's how I hit my target a lot quicker and I got transferred to the Montebello kiosk. But when I went there, Roger, it was a whole, it was like a chop shop, man. Everybody was doing it. Everybody. And I, I never forget Ernesto Vasquez, bless his heart. I still talk to him to this day. He made one day close to like $3,500 in features just flipping on television. Like literally I could not find for the life of me, any, any people to flip. Cause he yeah. had his name. It had his, his ID on it. And, and, and this is, I, that's what I was trying to explain to my boss, my manager. It's like, dude, it's like, what do you want me to do? If I, yeah. if we hit everybody in fucking, in the fucking city already. Like, what the hell do you want me to do? It's like, I can't go outside of our, our area. Cause right. was, we can't, we couldn't call people in Las Vegas. Like no. we couldn't call people out, out, of, out, of state. People out of our city, you know, yeah. it's only within our zone. So it's like, yeah. if you expect me to sell this shit, 
you know, and I sell it to everybody. What's going to happen afterwards, dude? You know? It's like, cause I couldn't find anything because yeah. people were, they had other codes on it. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, there's nothing we could do. So I would get shit for it. It's like, he thought that I would be not working. I'm like, dick, I can't work because there's nothing to work with. So, but yeah, you yeah, have the special area yeah. codes, man. You had to have the special area codes. Yeah, it, that was the trick to it, man. And and yeah. sometimes you got lucky, something you didn't. Because I, I remember at one point I didn't really have to do so much of it in a month, especially for some reason the month of October was always good for me. I don't know why. And that month uh, in October two thousand six, I did not use intelligence once, not one time. So I began to use it again in November and I'm like, oh, all this shit's opened up. I'm like, okay. So flip, 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 like all fucking month long until Black Friday came along. And then you didn't need to use it because, you know, come holidays, everything just kind of sold itself. Mm -hmm. And um, then came the dreaded new year, January, where you're like, oh, fuck, it's going to get slow. They still want us to hit these quotas, which quite frankly, right now, it's impossible because nobody has money. Yeah. And there you go again, start flipping again. And then at this point, I think they had already cracked down on that stuff because um, the customer care representatives were complaining that um, I don't know how it would work, Jose, but I, th I think flipping a feature to our name they would get hit for it. Yeah. Like they would have to like, they would take a, a, a negative hit. On Who, the, the, the company? You no, know, the customer care rep. The the call center. Because you're using mm. their program. Mm -hmm. No, no, they didn't. Uh, I'm pretty someone sure took a hit because it became an issue. Yeah, because I do remember a call center rep started to like, you know, you know, started to complain about shit. Because we're using their program. We weren't supposed to use intelligence at the retail. I remember, program. it would say C care on the code. Mm -hmm. And we would flip it to our our username. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if that, I don't know if they did take a hit or what, but it became a problem because they were offering them a commission for, uh, for features if they were to uh, add on or activate on uh, over the phone. Yeah. Because believe it or not, they, that's when I, I started, I started for, I, I foreshadowed like where this thing was going to go um, because people were more comfortable calling over the phone to activate instead of coming in a person. Mm -hmm. That was weird. And I'm like, wait, they rather not, they would not want to come into a store. Well, That's kind of weird. So, one of the reasons too is oh because, oh my gosh, your fucking ears were ringing. <laughs> Ernesto Vasquez. Look at this shit. Literally, it was like, like Undertaker and fucking uh, <laughs> buried alive. Dude, like, this, it's like, like, it's like, it's like, <laughs> yes, we are talking about singular wireless. And we're singular. talking about feature flipping, which you so solemnly train me on. Thank you for making me the most gangster fucking salesman ever, bro. Uh, I, I also, I, I, I liked using intelligence man, for activations because you could use older plants. You can activate older plants. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. And then, um, yeah, so fast forward. Oh, look at this motherfucker's already laughing. Look at that. I can hear that <laughs> laugh. Again. And, um, is that Optimus Prime? Yeah. That is Optimus Prime, bro. What's up, brother? Optimus Prime. I fucking miss you, dude. I haven't talked to you in forever. His, he had like this real poetic way of, of talking to district managers, Roger. And I'll never forget. He's like, oh, shit. Look at this. Don't even get me started on this. We, <laughs> we started an hour ago, man. Where were you? For some fucking strange reason we're still going. No, well, we're talking about retail hacks because that's originally what this whole conversation started with. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, Singular just so happened to be, we went from the franchises, the third parties that were also doing hacks. That we yeah, so strongly just ones, Yeah, covered. and then with Singular, we could flip. But even with AT&T, we would still be able to flip because we yes. still had intelligence access. And then yes. they, got, they made us get rid of all the physical contracts. Right, all of those, they were destroyed, and they came up with yeah. rocks. Remember rocks? ROCCS. Yes, ROCCS. Yeah. 
hated that shit too. They're like, yeah. get on rocks. Get on rocks. Get, get on, on rocks. rocks. I'm like, I'm like fuck, dude, get on no rocks. Problem. You mean smoke this rock? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so but because the, the main POS that we were using was Opus, I clearly remember because I remember I would make fun of it because it sounded like a disease that you inherited in the fucking jungles of Southeast Asia and shit, dude. The only piece, useless piece of shit or something like that with the acronym. Yeah. Yes, it was horrible, Ernesto. Yes, it was. Yeah. And um, yeah, for some reason, and that, that spotlighting these, these hacks, you know who never used any of these fucking hacks? Who? The last of the Mohicans. Sergio. Oh, uh, yeah, I was going to say that. Never had to use any goddamn fucking hack. I think he, no, he flipped features. He flipped features. Not I remember really. Him. Not really. Not he a was lot, but he did. He no, did. not like us. Not like, not like uh, us. I mean, and yeah, like, not like us, but he did. He did a little flip for feature. He, got, he was like, oh, I got to make, I got to make my metrics. Oh, my God. Bro, <laughs> do you. Go for it. Go nuts. <gasps> Fuck, dude. Yeah, he, he was just. It was the, look. He, Sixteen years later, Roger. He's, he's still, still there. there. I still don't believe he's that still he's still there. He's he still is a retail sales retail consultant. Dude, he's gonna retire. You should have food. like a corner office at the head at like headquarters. He, he doesn't want it, man. And I don't blame him because look at like I, I look at my niece. That's uh, uh, an area. Uh, was it a s m a r s area retail sales manager now. Uh -huh. Um, and dude, I see the shit that she deals with at, at, you know, at a, a such a young age. And I'm like, so this is what all these motherfuckers were dealing with, man. There's a lot of politics. There's a lot of like infighting within your district. There's, it's like, fuck man. Yeah. Look at Ernesto. He's still there. Yes, dude. Yeah. He literally bought a fucking store already <laughs> and he sleeps yeah. in there. He's gonna retire from AT and T eventually, bro. Yeah, it's like, dude, he he, he yeah, bought a franchise store. He built a Starbucks in it with marble good. fucking bricks in there. Yeah. No, but you know, truth be told, I mean, he just told me, uh, you know, um, on a text message that he just got interviewed by two banks, which is Chase and Wells Fargo, because he he already sees it, man. He's like, dude, I, he after sixteen years, I would assume that you're fucking. You're burnt out, man. Well, I mean, I would, I would honestly, I mean, I, I yeah, would not, you. I would not go into a retail job whatsoever anymore. I mean, they're gonna everything, every brick and mortar store is pretty, pretty much gonna go obsolete by in five years, probably. You know, everything's and look at all this, look at all this reflectiveness that we're fucking sharing with stories and all things how used to be, and you would have to come in person. And fast forward to today. Those hacks don't work. <laughs> Everything's very automated. Um, even when I worked at me and check this out, even speak, speaking of retail banking hacks, Jose got me a job at Washington Mutual. The day before, right? No, week, the day oh, before they filed for bankruptcy or something like that? No, the, week, well, the, week, the week of uh, me getting fingerprinted. Oh. And, um, passing background that's when the market crash happened and um yeah i agree ernesto yeah. quotas are shit shit for fucking i don't i don't get it man but retail banking had its own hacks too uh but you had th this is people's money you're dealing with so you yeah. had to be very careful very methodical but a lot of managers figured it out man they did it and they knew how to launder money and I'm like, fuck. So this is how these people do it. Like they would remember Jose, they would withdraw money. They would withdraw $9,000 or $9,999. No, no, no. no. It, let me tell you. It's actually, they would deposit and this goes out. I think this is free information and people should know. Yeah, it's so obviously, in, you, you can search the internet for this shit, dude. Yeah, Seriously. yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's out there. I mean, obviously, if you want to fly under the radar with the IRS, uh, you know, yeah. if you're trying to deposit money into your bank, you anything you that you deposit over ten thousand dollars, you have to report, right? So there's a yeah. sheet they have to fill out saying where the money came from, yada yada. Yep, keep it under ten thousand. Yeah. So if you deposit nine thousand nine hundred dollars. 
you're under that radar. You don't, you don't have, to, what you don't have to a CTR currency yeah, transaction. I, yeah, I don't remember what the form was called. I only I only yeah. probably had to fill out maybe twice because everybody knew they're already okay. I'm gonna deposit nine nine thousand nine hundred dollars. That way they don't have to re report where it came from. You know, what's the source? What do you do for money? Yada yada. Oh yeah, Alex used to be a, a PB dude, a personal banker. They do that. We were, uh, we, were, we were tellers, Alex. We were tellers. <laughs> yeah. And check this out, Roger. So they would deposit the money, right? Yeah. yeah. And then maybe like a week later, they would withdraw the same money, mm -hmm. right? And go into the safety deposit box that was in the same branch and stash the money in there. Okay. So they, I don't, I didn't get like the deposit going in and the withdrawal out. I didn't understand it. Maybe it was just to, to keep a paper trail or whatnot. Like maybe just stamp it like, okay, the IRS, okay, it's legit money that you're depositing and you're taking out. I, I don't know if that was the way they were doing it. So Some but, of them were also uh, doing the um, cashier's checks. The yes. deposit and the cashier's checks. Now, essentially, that, that money is washed. Yeah. 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 And how long the cashier's checks would last? It was like, what, maybe three years or two years, something like that? Something like that. Yeah, so they would, um, yeah, that, that money's printed on a piece of paper, Roger, like a certified fucking yeah, 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 yeah. And they would hold on to that money. They would put it away somewhere in, in a safe. But, dude, I, I remember some, this one fucking Asian guy would come in with, like, I, I could have swore, dude, there was at least half a million dollars in cashier's checks, man. Fuck. Yeah. He would just withdraw and then just put it on the stack like it, they were just neatly aligned and he kept a binder with it it was crazy alex said you i used to fuck all the tellers you whore <laughs> after losing a lot of weight and suited up the girls would give me attention i wasn't used to well, that's what you get for being a whore <laughs> go back to whore island <laughs> whore island <laughs> So, uh, yeah, yeah. So there, dude, and I kid you not, man, so many times, cause I used to have to refill the ATM, Roger. So many times I, I would refill this fucking ATM. I'm looking at this cash and I'm like, now I know where this fucking piece of paper is so fucking evil. There's a stench about it, man. Of this much money like this, dude, like this. Let, let me ask you a hundred thousand dollars. Let me ask you, what, what was the most that you ever counted in the vault? Probably, yeah, 100 grand. 100 grand. You know how much I, 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 I counted with Jen? It how was much? 300K. 300,000. 300,000 fucking that, dollars. And it was over that, it was like a long weekend or something. And then um, the security guards didn't come and get the, the drop. Um, yeah. So that it was just sitting there for like a weekend. And so we had to count it. It was 300 grand. Just oh. over 300 can. You guys could have disappeared. Stack, stack, stack. And I was like. Oh. But th that was a fine honed fucking operation. Even at that, that branch, Roger. Literally like, you know what the opening procedures were? The what? manager goes in first and you can't park next to each other. If you're driving. Okay. Uh, I was at one point I was taking the bus. So I had to wait a far, like way back make sure I was within view of the manager going in. And um, I, I, I don't remember the exact order, but they had to put, they had to tape something on the window on the, the glass plated window that you go, that you enter. And once you saw that you had to call the branch and you needed the safe word. Cause if they didn't use the safe word, that means we're getting robbed. Oh, just like that, dude. And the safe word would change every week. So there was no patterns. And it was like strawberry. It was like banana. It was fucking <laughs> chow mein, whatever they were fucking using. Uh, it, it was fun. And then that meant, that meant okay, we're clear. We go in. Um, and then came the day, like, we went fucking probably, like, maybe a year. 
and we had a, a Brazilian coworker named Carolina, right? Carolina Lopez, her old uh, uh, married name was Shelton. Yeah. And um, I think she still goes by. She got, ro- she got robbed right next to me, Roger. What? She was making all this ruckus to get my attention. And she got robbed, dude. She was literally like maybe inches away from me, not too much, like maybe a foot. How? Didn't even know because I was talking to my paisano fucking clients that they were just talking shit about whatever, and I was depositing their money because they were gardeners. It was this guy, this older. He looked like an older Chicano guy, huh, Jose? Uh, who, who are you talking about? Uh, I don't know if you were there. Were you? Were you still working there when Carolina got robbed? I think I was already gone, or it yeah. might have been a day off, or something like that. No, I think I was already yeah. gone, and you had told me about it, and I'm like. Bro, yeah. you not pay attention, bro. <laughs> it, was, it was, dude. I was like, she was banging and doing all kinds of shit, trying to get my attention, Roger. But the guy basically gave her a note, said, "Hey, gave me the money. I have a gun." Calmly, but, didn't say anything. Did you guys have bulletproof glass? Probably no, no. This is before uh, the glass would come in, dude. Bro, so the guy, we the guy the most- with at least what we ten were, grand, yeah. maybe. Bro, we worked at the most vulnerable bank ever. There's no yes. plastic glass, no bulletproof glass. It was just like, okay, come and rob me. Take my money. It literally <laughs> looked like one of those fucking banks, Roger, in a in a in a movie that you know is gonna get robbed by like the Joker or fucking, you know, a bunch of dudes in masks and shit or the the nylons over their heads. It was that it looked like that kind of bank, dude. An old bank. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And uh they eventually upgraded stuff, but there was still no plexiglass. They just up they just updated the ball and the computer systems and whatnot. And yeah, she got robbed. He hit three fucking locations in the matter of like three hours, dude. Wow. Yeah, all with a note. That's what he did. And oh I I don't know. What ended up happening to the guy? But I think he got away. To be honest with you, good night, Ernesto. Too bad you weren't around for the real juice, <laughs> and that's your fault. But good night. Um, yeah. So it was, uh, it was fucked up, man. She she was traumatized for a while, and they would not let us leave because then San Gabriel PD came in, and it was something out of a fucking movie, man. Wow. Like I was upstairs. Uh, I think I was taking a shit in the bathroom and I heard footsteps coming I'm like oh fuck yeah. <laughs> and they're like tiptoeing to make sure I'm like dude this guy's gonna kill me fuck and um he announced like is anyone in the restaurant I'm like yes employee he's like identify yourself and I'm like Edgar Hernandez I'm a teller he goes okay he's like is anyone in there with you I'm like nope he goes all right he's like I'm gonna wait till you come out <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I had a very up wife, and then uh, he's like, "I'm like, you want me to come out with uh, my hands up or within within view?" He goes, "Yes, please." I'm like, "Okay, I'm coming out." So I came out, and I'm just like, "Yeah, he, he had the 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 AR-15 pointed right at me, dude." Whoa! So, yeah, just in case, man. And I'm just like, "Okay, I'm like, I'm clear. There's no one in the restroom." He goes, "He's like, just step aside. I'm gonna do a check." So oh, he went God. in, dude. Like. Yeah, because dude, it's it's one of those scenarios where you, ever taking, you just finished taking a shit, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you don't know if someone's hiding in there or you're being held hostage or whatever. Yes, Nadia, we're still yes. talking about drugs. He's right. Why are we still talking about this now? Well, I mean, we the original topic was retail hacks. Um I, I got to know a lot. Roger got to know a lot. So did Jose. You know, I wound up not working for that company anymore because I was placed under suspension for something I didn't fucking do. And I lost my job. The union didn't do shit for me. And then the order follows. Then Roger uh, got into some shit with the same company too. I and then eventually, and eventually Jose too. He's just like, dude, I think we were we were just spent, but I could, could vividly recall all the fun times we had with that company and all the yeah. fucked up it's like waking up at what six five thirty in the morning, in the morning. Go to fucking oh my god boot camp. 
I oh, shit, dude, I remember. And me and when... Jose were still drunk for the night before. No, yeah. dude, I got in, no, I got in trouble with, with Oscar in the yeah. parking lot. As I was walking up, I was still in my sweats and my fucking hoodie. And I like, cause underneath I had like my, my pajamas that I was sleeping on, my, my shirt, whatever I was sleeping in. And he honks his horn and he's like, Hey, Roger. I'm like, what's up, dude? He's like, why are you in dress code? I'm like what? He's like, why aren't you in dress code? I'm like, dude, it's four o'clock in the morning. There's no dress code at this hour, man. And I kept walking up, you know, and I didn't give a fuck, dude. I was just like, dude, I'm half asleep. I don't care what the fuck you guys <laughs> say. Just reprimand me, do whatever. I'm going to go home and sleep after this, you know, because they're fucking, they're bullshit. I was no pushover with these guys. I didn't care what the fuck they said. It's like, hey, you want to fire me for something? Find something. And I remember Marco wanted to fire me for, for drinking. Like, he wanted to fire me because I had a beer for my lunch break. He's that was like, the oh, I found out what you do at a Lunder Hot Wings. I'm like, what? This is when they just got their yeah, liquor license. Yeah, we wings and we drink beer. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I had lunch, I had a sandwich, I had a fuck. beer. Big whoop. And <laughs> when, when um, my uh, union rep called me, she goes, well, did anything happen? I'm like, yeah, actually, I got like three more activations with that. He's like, she starts laughing. Oh, so you loosened up a bit, I guess. I'm like, maybe one beard does the job. Hey, all right. Those guys just wanted to get rid of me. They yeah, were they they, they were at that point. They were just picking on Roger Jose. It was. And, and you know and why I got fired? Point, dude? I got put under. Uh, I got oh, yeah. on a red flag because I activated <laughs> an iPhone good. on my own personal account when we weren't supposed to do that. How the fuck? Do you want me to promote our flagship product to our yeah. customers if I can't have one myself, you know? Yeah. So that put a red flag on my account. But the reason why I got fired is because I accessed my own personal account one time. Yeah. You know? That's the reason why I got fired. Yeah. You know? That was that was the biggest crapshoot ever, man. That no, was that, that were, should not have even happened, but fired. I mean, one of our other co workers, she, she transferred and she worked at the Azusa store. She got fired for parking too close to the store. What exactly? Oh, exactly. Sure. exactly. It's like, what the fuck? Stupid. They, they're like, oh no, you're, you're not supposed to park so close because those spaces are for our customers. It's like, and her argument was, well, my car got damaged when I couldn't keep an eye on it. I'm not risking it, I'm parking it here. You're gonna pay for that. They fired her afterwards. And I was like, that's bullshit. You know, fucking bullshit. And you know, they just try to find shit for it. But there was a lot of good times at that place, you know. The the coworkers there, the friends that I made, they they made the the they made the time go by pretty cool. Um yeah, totally. I wanna I wanna I wanna um uh shout out to Angel, Angel Mendoza. That yes, guy sir. that guy, like he would do things play pranks on on employees on the coworkers, just just because you know he froze someone's stapler like you put it in the freezer in a cup of water and froze it <laughs> and this guy spent like 20 something bucks on a really nice looking stapler you know and he's like hey man uh, this was a uh, robert remember robert um <laughs> <his brother? laughs> like fucking this guy was like mean like cholo out dude like hey man what's up he's like Hey, where's my fucking stapler at, dude? He's like, and Angel was like, Oh, I'll go get it for you. And he brought it out and it's in the cup in a block, like solid ice. <laughs> Puts it on the desk. Here you go. <laughs> what the fuck, dig? <laughs> wow. He, he, he thought it out. And me and Angel would always laugh after that. We would always laugh because when he would <laughs> use it, when he would use that stapler, it would make like this really loud, annoying squeak. Cause it was rusted, you know. So every time we'd staple something, you'll hear eek, eek. eek. <laughs> just laugh. <laughs> you fucking laugh at it. <laughs> you fucked up the staple. So what did Nadia say? When I worked at the bowling alley right there at Beverly Lanes, mm -hmm. I wanted to quit right before I turned eighteen because I hated it there. But my mom said if I quit, she would kick my ass. And yes, I was scared of her. So I did everything I thought would get me fired. I went in late, didn't show up at all, and just playing gave no effort, and those mofos wouldn't fire me. It wasn't until I moved out that I finally quit. Back in the day when kids were afraid of their parents. Oh, yeah. 
No, well, well I, I meant to ask Jose because me and Roger stopped working. You were still employed. Yeah. So you went from the kiosk to, to where, Jose? You went uh, to... Okay. So, Papa, um, no? Yeah, so basically they phased out the Gigante kiosk yeah. project or whatever. And so everybody got to choose a primary store, like a primary location where they want to go. And then the second, like a second backup in case, you know, they can't take you. So I went originally to Huntington Park. So close. I live in the Southgate. Shout yeah. out to South Korea. Uh So HP is like the next city over. It's like right next door, like probably like five minutes away from my house, 10 minutes, like yeah. eight minutes, something like that. On Pacific? And so on Pacific and Florence, <laughs> the, <laughs> hot, the biggest store, the busiest like, store in probably that's, LA. That's the Mexican Sunset yeah. Boulevard, dude. <laughs> Yes. yes. So I went there. Um, so let me tell you about that time there. Um, when I went there, it was kind of like, it was, I was a little bit shocked and kind of weirded out at the same time. Really? Sense. Yeah. They were busy. There was like, this is like where you want, you would, where you want to be. Cause you probably going to make the most money there. Um, I'm like, oh my God, I'm just going to have a field day here, especially with my experience. You know, I'm going to make so much money, right? The Their manager was such a pencil pusher and by the buck, you had to sell a certain way. They would literally turn away sales. The first of all, when I first got there that first week, we had to do some type of training. It was me and some other guy. He was also from like a different kiosk. I forgot. Um, where he was located at but he came he came, he was working with me so we came from the same kiosk we're like hey man what's up and he's like yeah i worked at this kiosk oh that's cool man i, I worked at pico he's like, oh all right cool man and so you know we're both hustlers and we're like all right man hopefully we're gonna make some money the guy made us do this crazy ass training we're like oh my god really and i think he had us do rocks for like three days and i'm like he didn't even let us be on the sales floor I think until like the very fifth day or something like that, or the following week, they finally let us on the sales floor. Yes. And so we were shadowing. We couldn't even sell. They had us like so restricted. I'm like, what's this guy's deal, man? Like, you know, I don't don't remember his name. Is that that what his name was? Yeah. His name was Frankie. Yeah. Yeah. He sounded familiar. And the guy had like this weird system set up and, there was just get so much traffic. Literally, uh, there was like this one point where they they were turning away sales. Oh, if you're not getting more than three two lines, you know you're gonna have to go somewhere else. I was like, "What? Are you kidding me?" Oh, like, really? Give me those sales. I'll take them. They're like, "Yeah, now we only activate like three plus lines." You know, if if we're so busy, like you know, yeah, we're not gonna deal with that. They can go to a different location. Wow! Like, oh my wonderful. god! I was like, uh uh-uh. uh wow like and i approached them like why are we turning away sales like that makes no sense and i would question them a lot of shit i was like really like this is supposed to be the busiest store like we're losing a lot on so much money like i'm I'm like i can't make money here like how is that gonna work i'm like no and the guy didn't the guy didn't like us he didn't like me he didn't like the the other guy it's just we're we're cut from a different car. This guy's just a pencil pusher. He wants to hit his yeah. metrics. He, that's all he cares about. Mm-hmm. We're like, we need to make our money. Yeah, we're going to try to push metrics, but, you know, to a certain point, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, yeah. I'm going to try to do the best thing where it's going to make me the most money. And the guy wasn't right. down with that. So I don't know who he talked to. I think he, I think Joe was the one running the region or whatever. He made a deal. He's like, okay, so I'm going to have you guys. If you guys want to um, go to a different store, this is your opportunity. They have an opening at Hawaiian Gardens. I think that's going to be more your style. If you're down with that, it's a little bit of drive. You know, it's up to you. I'm like, well, let me think about it. Let me do the drive and see how it goes. I think I went there one day and I'm like, all right, this is not bad. Um, And so that's where I met Chris. Yeah, and I'm like, all right, you know what? All right, cool. I'm like, I'll, I'll do it. I'll try it out. Let's do it. And yeah, man, uh, it was like a 25, 30 minute drive to um, Hawaiian Gardens. 
from South Kitchen oh. Wine Gardens. But in that store, everybody was a hustler. Everybody was a hustler. It was so much good friendly competition, so much good times. Like, yeah. oh my God, it, 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 was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. That's where I met JJ. Um, yeah. JJ. Um, that's where I met JJ. Um, that's where I met, um, oh my God, I forgot that guy's name. Um, Julie, uh, it was, this is a little hot girl named Julie. She had like a big old ass too. Kind of like a Eddie Kami <laughs> Yeah, man. Uh, she, oh, dude, and she knew how to use her assets, bro. Like, literally, she would, the, the men flocked to her. Wow. Little, little finger. All of them. All so of you, them. you guys had a fucking team, man. We had a legit team, man. We had a guy named Alex, too. I forgot his last name. He actually ended up running um, the Downey store. He became the manager at the Downey store. Right. Um, he was like he was like the lead or something, and then um, he got the promote. I think he got the opportunity to go as an AM to Downey, and I think he eventually got, you know, he got bumped up to manager or something like that. Um, right. He was like the, the top sales rep. JJ was kind of like number two. Um, I forgot the other guy's name. Uh, he he was a really cool guy too. He he was an OG. He lived in Southgate too. Um, and then I was like right there, like I was like three four, like always number three or number four, number three number four, um, right along, like right behind, right underneath JJ. Um, yeah. And we were the top. Yeah, we were always like always us the top four, and it was always very competitive. And I was there till about two thousand and. 2009, 2010, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then I remember you're like, dude, I'm having attendance attendance issues at this place. He's like, I do think they're gonna let me go. And I'm like, are you Which serious? Fucking yeah. Far? yeah, he's Christ. like, and, and he's like, dude, I, I I already knew Roger. I'm like, dude, Jose's checked out. I don't think he wants to be there anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah I man. Was, I mean, I was I was in that time, I was already kind of in the process of like trying to find a place to, like, I was trying to find a store to transfer over here in Albuquerque. I was already wanting to move out in Albuquerque. Um, I think he came and visit for like two weeks. Um, and um, I had a job lined up. Unfortunately, due to uh, a problem that I, a little thing that, a little find that I didn't take care of, uh, I, you know, I didn't get that job. But um, it was still, it was, I was gonna work for, I think Sprint. And- um, Oh, yes. yes. Yeah, and I was gonna make, it was actually a pretty good paying job. Actually, I think it was the same, but since um, out here, the cost of living is like way less than what it is in California, I would have made pretty good money, but it ended up working out. So by the time I came back, I was like, ah, oh, man, I'm kind of kind of done with this. I'm going to figure out something else. Yeah. You know, and so. No, I hear you. Yeah, the stuff, man. The work, the still work the sales for, like, for example, Sergio, he said it's not. Of course, it's not what it used to be. the The quotas are very, very unattainable. Even though he hits them for some fucking reason, I don't know how. Um, and you know, it, it's it's a form of corporate indoctrination that these managers, these these um, administrators, man, in within the company. They it's their own Kool-Aid that they drink and it's all for profit and you know, fuck the employee because they can just hire somebody else. Yeah. Brand new and probably for less money. And that that's kind of like that that's that's been the the problem, but nonetheless, I mean they're they're part of the too big to fail. Um, because they're just either gonna get acquired by somebody else or they're just gonna morph into another type of service, just like Sprint. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sprint didn't go anywhere. They got acquired by T-Mobile, and you know, you know a lot of management positions were were axed because that's oh, what happened definitely. with when Singular got acquired or, or when Singular acquired AT and T, mm-hmm. but they kept the AT and T name because it's it's an older name in the stock market and it's people recognize that name, and a lot yep. of a lot of AT and T managers were c- cut off. Yeah, you know? yeah, definitely. It's, but uh, no, no, nonetheless, I mean, it, it was all, it was fun, man. It was fun. Uh, fast forward, we we have, you know, our, our current 
our current situations now. And then, then now I'm like, fuck, I'm thinking about, it. I'm like, during a pandemic, how, how are you surviving on the sales for? That's so fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, but, but it, it boils down to, I guess, uh, creativity and just kind of adapting with the, with this time. Um, uh, but, uh, it's like, fuck man. It, I know for a while there, the AT&T was sending reps to house calls to activate them there. What? Because that's what we had done for the upgrades from uh, for my wife and my mother-in-law. Someone came to your house? Two young guys came in. They activate on tablets now. That's so weird. They have the equipment in the van. They take your payment first. Then they go get the equipment and they come out. What? Yeah, it's 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 the craziest thing ever. I never thought I would see that. It's literally like a mobile service for mobile service, which is fucking like, you know, prostitutes on wheels, bro. That's what basically what they are. Fuck. Dude. But uh, wow. any, anyway, I mean, I know we we've talked a lot about work and shit, and that was pretty interesting stuff. But um, we're 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 gonna end uh with this ask Reddit question, Jose, that me and Roger kind of handpicked because we're like, okay, we got to talk about this shit. Right. Yeah. And um, usually I spotlight different uh, parts of the podcast because obviously I go late so we can be ourselves. We can cuss whatever. There's no kids watching. Yeah. Uh, and at the same time, I, I, I chop up the podcast in different segments like they do with, you know, if for all you aspiring podcasters that are watching the replay or even watching now, whatever, um, do just that you know, get clips of your podcast of the most interesting segments, but make sure you know how to bookmark it yourself. But why, why are you logging into another computer, man? What are you doing? I lost the, I lost the, hey, shit. there's two people. Look at that. Oh, you got a twin motherfucking brother. Look at that shit. Wow. All right. His name Jose too. It's like, it's like George Foreman. Oh my it's kids George. Name George. And what are you making for dinner, George? Hot dogs on the George Foreman lean, mean, fat reducing grilling machine that's really quality. Remember that? <laughs> All right, ready? All right. What was the most interesting dream you've ever had? Who wants to go first? Let Jose go first. Can you think about anything yet? Or. Uh, right, I'll go first. I'll go first. I'll go first. Because I already knew the question and I figured something out. So, just recently, in fact, this was, let me see here, on the 16th. So, four days ago. Uh, the night before, I decided to watch that documentary on Netflix, The Night Stalker, on oh, shit. Richard Ramirez, right? And he, you know about that guy, right, Jose? The, yeah, the, not about Richard. Serial killer not, around yeah. here, like yeah. lived here in LA. Anyways, I was like, "Wow, like fucking wow!" But that shit scared me. Like, I can't believe this guy did this. And what what really fucking freaked me out was those pictures of this dick. You know, it's like fuck. So, anyways, I had a fucking nightmare. I had a nightmare about that shit, dude. And <laughs> as soon as I woke up. I messaged this dick. I'm like, dude. So I have it here just so I could remember it because usually when you dream something, you forget it, you know? So here's just like a little, a little tip for everybody. Keep a notepad or your phone with notes next to your bed. If you have a really crazy dream, even especially with something that has an idea, yeah, write it down because you're going to forget it immediately. Anyway, so let me see. I, I, I sold him. I told him this. Okay, so. I was just waking up and I, so I had a DMD. He said, dude, I had a night stalker. Doc, you gave me a, a fucking nightmare. He says, what about? He says, it was about a female copycat killer. Okay. And he's like, damn. He's like, what if, she, what if she was hot? You know, Edgar was like, man, imagine a fucking hot bitch just fucking going out there, slashing your ass. He goes, but here's you the weird thing. You in with them titties. I told her. I, what I saw was nothing but complete strangers in my dream, people that I didn't know. So usually when you dream, it's people that you know. You know, you have dreams about, you know, people that are close to you. These were just 
random people. I didn't recognize any faces in my dream. And what, what she was doing is, says, I'm in this dream and this woman is torturing, like she would torture these people and mutilate them. And her victims, like they would all be at the same location, like at a, like this crazy, like old derelict house. And she would drug them. Like instead of like forcing people, she would like drug them. And then That's fucking crazy, they'd, end up, they'd end up waking up tied up in a chair and she would torture them and then fucking slash them up. Uh, then I said, then I see her victims as angry ghosts. Like they came back as like evil, angry spirits. And she's like, Edgar's like, can you imagine a hot ass bitch serial killer? And go, the last person she had tied up was her professor or teacher who was coaching her. Like, she, so this was something like I started putting two and two together. This reminds me so much of the movie Saw. All right. Mm -hmm. so, like, so she used the scalpel to untie him. Then he turned on her. Like, and here's the weird part. He goes, I was there the whole time and I get a hammer and I begin to torture her. Like I'm with a hammer and I'm breaking her fucking joints, her knees and shit. And and then this is after I left, like I left and I closed the door. Um, I left her with the ghosts, like these evil spirits. They just started attacking her. And then I ended up in Rosemead where the first murder of Richard Hernandez, I mean, Richard Ramirez took place. I could see the whole thing, like me standing behind him for some fucking reason. I can, it's like and it's he, so vivid. Interesting about that and that murder, Jose. That, yeah. that that first murder literally took place like down the road from where we're at. Really, no yeah, shit. Well, well, the new, well, the new Walmart is. Yeah. yeah. And I, 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 I woke up scared because I felt like he was yeah. in my room. Like I felt it. I literally felt like this guy was standing at like like the side of my bed with my back turned to him, and I I. I like I, I got up, I jumped up, and I looked back. I'm like, like screaming, no, it's you know, and fuck, it was crazy dream about that shit, man. That's the one thing I remember because, and I wrote it down. So that's the whole reason why I can tell you in details. You know, I had to write it down. You know, you you got to do that whenever you have this crazy crazy dream. You got to do that. I want yeah. to try to record a voice now and not wake anyone up while you fucking doing it. So, oh, that too, yeah, yeah. Well, Jose, what about you, man? Uh, I don't know, man. Um, I don't even fucking remember most of my dreams, man. Are you serious? Fuck no, I don't even want to remember be one that you just never forgot, bro. I don't know, man. Like, I'm I was trying to think about it right now. I know when I was a kid, I would have fucked up nightmares i would get like freaked out by by the ufos oh like, i don't blame you bro I don't yeah blame like you. there was I um blame you remember unsolved mysteries i think they would show like ufo shit or like uh okay so it was like the murder ones and then the, like they were talking about ufos I was like oh fuck we watched the x files uh me and my dad uh rest in peace we, we watched the x files that shit would fucking freak me out dude I mean, I would, I would like be into it, but it would freak me out at, at the end, like when I had to go sleep. I think, I don't know, man. I remember like having dreams, or sometimes like I feel like the damn fucking like like Roger was saying. I feel like the damn alien was like at the foot of my bed, or like the fucking thing was like hovering right above my fucking no room, dude. Fucking yeah. shit. On the, over the roof. I'm like, fuck wow. that. Oh, a lot of sleepless nights, man. You know, and I was a kid, man. I didn't know fucking any better. So I think that's probably like the ones that I can remember, man. The really scary yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. So and now I'm like, uh, now, now I'm like, Those okay, I want to. Yeah. Now I'm like watching Skinwalker Ranch. I'm watching Skinwalker Ranch. I'm watching fucking Joe Rogan with, uh, what's his name? Um, the dude who was, uh, who was at, uh, Area 51. Oh, um, I'm all watching that shit. Yeah, I'm like, oh man, this shit's yeah. fucking real, dude. Yeah, I know what you're talking. Yeah, about. It, after after seeing that and and kind of like going back to the old footage that that they have actually, 
you know, basically published, man. I mean, it's no fucking secret. Now you have yeah. former secretaries of defense talking shit about it, saying, hey, yeah, this shit's this shit's for real. Um, you know, it's only a matter of time before it becomes public. And that that to me, is it terrifying? I don't really know because we never really found uh any kind of public um broadcasted fucking encounters man because yeah. everything is just surveillance everything is just a hearsay everything is eyewitness accounts nothing like the movie signs where they're broadcasting this shit nationally globally well <laughs> Let, let me tell you a quick story. Just remember, just remember War of the Worlds, dude. If I yeah. would think, I, I'm just thinking, if Orson Welles never did that broadcast over the radio, then maybe disclosure would have happened. Like something would have happened and said, yeah, you know what? We are working with them. But because he did that broadcast and because of how the people reacted, like they literally were getting ready for war People were starting to, like, you know, kill each other for, like, shelter and shit like that. Um, it had to be mass hysteria, like, mass hysteria. Yeah. If, if, if we were to see shit like that happening on TV, like, people would start killing each other just so they could survive. Yeah. Yeah. What's, this, what's what? the story you're referring to, Rose? Yeah. Oh, sorry. okay. Oh, no, I was going to tell you a quick story. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know if I could say that. I saw what I saw was it, but um, when I was planning to to um, you know when I was planning to move over here to Albuquerque, um, I was traveling back and forth from Albuquerque to L.A. Uh, to Orange County. So um, we're driving to we're driving over here to Albuquerque. We're passing by this uh, small city called Gallup, New Mexico, and it was probably like two one two in the morning. So it was around like this time. It's dark. Um, that's a small city, so you don't really have a lot of light, bright lights or anything like that. So you're going down the highway, and I see like this triangle shaped object that had lights. At first, I thought it was like a helicopter, right? So I'm like, oh, maybe it's a helicopter. But then I'm like, wait a minute, this is a small city. I don't see like a little night sun, and I don't hear any propellers spinning. Like you, you hear propellers. You know, and you we all know since we live in LA, we used to I used to live in LA. You guys live in LA. You hear the ghetto board, the ghetto birds, and they're very distinct. Yeah. I didn't hear any of that. And I was like, Oh shit, I think I saw a UFO. No. I was no. like I was tripping out and it was low, man. It, it wasn't like high up, it was relatively maybe like I say maybe about five hundred feet from the air. That's 500 to maybe a thousand. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. It's pretty low. And I was like, oh, fuck. And I was driving probably like 75 because the speed limit is like 75. I was like, oh, shit. What the Whoa, fuck did I just see? No fucking way. Yeah, man. Yeah, I saw one. I even sent the footage to Edgar. Remember? I showed it to you. Yeah, yeah. We're over here over my house. It's like, I yeah. would see one. I still I still have the footage. I have to share it with you sometime. It, 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 it would it like pretty interesting, dude. It was it looked like it was phasing in and out. Yes. Reality. Like L literally like even like if it was trying to focus in and out in, in, yeah. in the sky. This was a, during the day, like yeah. four o'clock in the afternoon. And yes. over here, there's no clouds, so it's clear blue sky, and you see like this silver round object yeah just at first, at first you think it's like a planet that it, it, you can actually visually see yeah during the daytime kind of like the moon but it like begins this was, to move around <laughs> yeah. it was it was it had a metallic shape like metallic look and yeah i would see it floating and i this was actually i the third day in a row that i saw it I kept telling this guy, dude, I see a UFO. He's like, take video next time. So this time I did, and I try to focus it as much as I can. But you know, when you're holding your camera, it's not it's not really steady. But this guy yeah. managed to steady it. But you could see it's round, and then like yeah. you could see like it's reflecting the light, and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. it would like it would do this, like like disappear and reappear, disappear and reappear. Yeah. 
Like it looked, it, it it's uh, like if it was trying to get get invisible, like so it wouldn't, yeah. it wouldn't see it. it, it, then, it was, uh, then eventually, it just like did this, it, like it like did this, and it looked like it faded away in the distance. Yeah, gone. And I was like, it, it, it's. It, I have to share with you. It's very very amazing to fucking to watch, yeah. but. Uh, but my most inter- interesting dream that I've ever had, yeah. And please refrain from laughing, because fuck, fuck y'all. Is my infamous uh, Santa Monica Pier slash beach dream that I had maybe like fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, no, maybe twenty years ago. In the dream, I'm having a picnic on the sand. With all my friends, family, it's good time, bright, you know, day. You can see the uh, the ocean is actually clean for some fucking reason in Santa Monica because it's filthy. And I'm eating a sandwich, talking to people, and then I'm like, all right. I'll, in the dream, I remember riv- vividly. I get in the water, so I can feel the water going in. I'm going like this, and I'm swimming out to shore. Waves are kicking, and I'm like, all right. I'm like, come on, and then I turn around. And these motherfuckers spoil the party. The big ass T Rex coming and just stomping on people and just fucking eating and, <laughs> and then I just see fucking just people getting strangled. Oh. I'm just like in the water going, oh shit. And then you see my my arch nemesis, man, the fucking Velociraptors, dude. They're coming in, they're fucking people up, right? And then um they're Everyone's just decimated on the sand, blood everywhere, fucking limbs everywhere. Everyone's getting fucked up eating. And I'm the only one in the ocean stuck. And then these pieces of shit, they're looking around like this. And then they're like, they look at each other like this. And then they turn to me. They all, these fucking things look at me. And I'm just like in the dream going, just stay in the water. Don't move. These fucking pieces of shit can't fucking swim so you're good because the t-rex is not going to make it in there and they fucking look at each other and they come into the water like that and then (laughs) they jump in and i'm like haha jokes on you i'm thinking in the dream and then all i see is these fucking pieces of shit start backstroking (laughs) claw like that and then i'm just like ah I screamed in the dream, dude. And then they, they were getting very close to me and I started swimming away and they were just gaining on me. And I'm like, fuck like that. And then I woke up. Damn. Ever since that day, <laughs> that's this, dinosaurs, man. This is, this is, really like, this is after dinosaurs. we saw Jurassic Park? No, this oh, was Lord. already in my adult life. I remember vaguely what triggered the dream but it was because i had gotten too high with the band that night and we were talking about something prehistoric or oh, i don't know what but the power of suggestion as roger would so solemnly knows and so do you jose <laughs> when you're that fucking high on cannabis dude Oh it, God. It, it doesn't it it consumes you, man. You become that yeah. thought. You become and, yeah. But That's a whole other thing. Oh but you go you go to sleep and you have these fucking just winds of waves of fucking different conjectures and theories. And that's most people are like, oh, I get high and I don't I, I don't dream. I'm like, for me, quite the contrary, dude. If I get high. Dude, there's a Stephen King novel fucking brewing in there somewhere. <laughs> and, and then quite the contrary, there's some of the funniest dreams that I fucking had. Like, for example, I had a dream that that me and Roger and I think it was Jesse in the dream. Um, we were uh we were we were we were part of a circus. What? A traveling circus. And and the dream, I remember, I'm trying to figure out what Roger did and what Jesse did, but I had a job. I would run, I would run the carousel. That was my job. And um Okay. <laughs> and then I remember in the dream, Roger looks at me and goes, Oh shit, showtime. And Jesse's like, Yeah, me too. And I'm just like, Well, where the fuck are you guys going? And they're like, No time. Like that. That's how I remember. No time. And you guys jammed. 
And then I hear the roar of the crowd. Oh, yeah. Oh, like excitement. I'm like, what the fuck are these guys doing? I'm over here in a carousel and shit, right? And then um, fucking Roger comes back. He's washing his hand. Jesse comes back. And they, they start talking about how badass their show was and the reaction of the crowd. And I'm sitting there in the fucking carousel. I go, fuck you guys, dude. What do you guys do? And they're just talking and talking, ignoring me, dude. Right. And I'm like, I remember in the dream, I stopped the carousel. Right. And all these people just fly off. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not starting this carousel again until you guys tell me what the fuck you guys do here at the circus. And then Roger looks at the carousel like, and Jesse's like frightened because I think I kill people, dude. <laughs> like just little, I mean, like I hit it and just boom, stop abruptly, and all these bodies just fucking flew. And Roger's like, "I'm a trapeze artist, dude. I'm a trapeze artist. Start the carousel." And Jesse's like, "Yeah, me too. I'm a trapeze artist. We do the whole fucking the act." And I'm like, "All right." So boom, I hit it, and then he's like, "No, don't!" And he hits it again. People are getting trampled under the fucking carousel, dude. <laughs> and, and then uh, I'm like, oh, fuck. And I start laughing in the dream. And all, all I see is Roger like this, like, <laughs> no, no. And and Jesse's trying to pull people out, whatever. And then I remember, it's like when I, wake up, I start laughing hysterically. I'm like, ah, ha, ha. I go, Roger, you're a trapeze artist. That's fucking hilarious. Ah, 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 like that, dude. And they wake up. <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, dude. I got mad and stopped the fucking carousel, dude. And had Yo, people I was just because they wanted to know what they uh, fucking did in the circus. Uh, so fuck, that's interesting. That that's um, but anyway, I mean, we're reaching the two hour and eleven minute um mark. Um, we're gonna end with this because Roger's gonna help us, Jose. What? Um this weekend on Saturday, uh, the world will be tuning in. And I, I forgot to mention it to Roger. Um, I don't know what type of pay-per-view numbers they're going to do, Roger, to be honest with you. But I'm pretty sure they're going to be significant. They're going to be huge because what two a week a week ago this week, uh, a year ago this week, um, he made his triumphant return after his um well you were here roger when you saw that whole fucking melee go down in las vegas with habib okay uh and uh you're gonna help us pick winners um mm -hmm. and for people who don't know what i'm talking about he's back on saturday oh fuck! and as dustin poirier who was another badass um that's fighting Mystic Mac, you know, Conor McGregor. And check this out, Roger. They're fighting at Fight Island in Abu Dhabi, where that's the island that yeah. Dana White purchased. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you know this already. And here's the thing is, it's at 7 p.m. our time Pacific, but I don't even know what time it's going to be over there, to be honest with you. Um, like it's right now, it's right like in the morning, some shit. Like time in Abu Dhabi right now. Right now it's it's twelve. They're literally a day ahead of us. It's twelve thirty four p.m. So they're fighting so Sunday. They're right? yeah. They're technically fighting Sunday at what seven in the morning. Looks yeah, like it, yeah. That sounds about right. So. Bless them, man. Fuck, this is this is crazy to to be a combat athlete like this and have to travel half you know across the world to kick someone's ass and you know have a different fucking sleep schedule and get paid for That's it. Though. Crazy, yes, of course. And this this is a very significant purse that they're they're going to have. Of course, Connor's going to get the bigger you know the bigger purse, obviously, because he's the bigger draw. Right. Um, but there's there. Uh, we're just going to focus on the main card because uh, there's prelims and early prelims. But from this fight card, seriously, Roger, that I'm looking at, uh, shout out to Jessica I, uh, really, actually, very good friend of my old teammate, high school teammate um, at Shore High School, Jimmy Masuda. 
Uh, he goes by Jimmy J. He's the one of the founders of LA Originals, which grow the best fucking cannabis in LA. Uh, shout out to him, uh, Josh and Michael Melendez. I love you guys. Spartan football forever. Um, she's on the roster. She's the one. She's on the fight card too. So she's fighting Joanne Calderwood. Um, the one I'm very interested in, and uh, Jose can elaborate on this one, yep. is this fight right here, Roger. And I'm going to tell you why. Dan Hooker um, is probably, I would like to say he's Ken from Street Fighter. That's the best, <laughs> that's the best way I could describe him. Okay. Well, he looks like fucking Ken he's, from Street he's Fighter. He's got nine losses, right? Um, but the, the motherfucker's bad. Now, who Michael Chandler is Ryu. Really? So this is a Ken and Ryu fucking matchup, man. So you're saying they're evenly matched? They're very evenly matched. I mean, obviously, you can't see any of the uh, the reach and the leg reach on Michael Chandler for some reason. I don't think it's up. But I believe they're the same height. Um, they're fighting at the same weight, which is uh, 155, which is considered the, the lightweight category. Right. Um, uh, and then this is the, I don't know, but here's the thing. Michael Chandler fought in that other promotion, Bellator, uh, for a long time. So he, this is his first debut fight in the UFC um, ever. I don't think he's fought for the promotion, like, ever. Um, no, it was his first time. Well, that's yeah, probably that's why there's no stats then. Yeah, but I'll tell you this. They're very, very identical to Dan Hooker. Uh, only thing is, I think this part, the grappling part for Dan Hooker uh, does not match what he has. No. Uh, Michael Chandler is just that much better. As a matter yeah. of fact, I'm going to go out on a limb here, Roger. One of these two guys has to eventually fight Habib if Habib still sticks around for that last fight. Or I don't know what kind of deal um, Dana proposed to him because he met with them this week. Uh, and for those who don't know who Habib Nurmagomedov is, he's he's billed right now as I think he's a, a, a prox. He is the pound for pound best fighter in the world. And then I, I remember and checking then the last of the ra- ra- ranking. Yeah, um, he took uh, John Jones's place, obviously. Um, and uh, you. Roger, one of these two guys can really be a problem. Not not to say that Conor McGregor still can't be a problem for Habib, um, because I'm just this is all speculation. The the Conor McGregor that Habib fought when we watched the fight, Roger, yeah, was not the Conor McGregor that that is exists now. Mm-hmm. He's okay. literally a shadow of what he was, and he he took him four rounds. Right, you remember yeah, watching yeah. this fight? We had a reaction video yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and these are the le- the most legit fucking combat athletes in the world, le- you know, without a doubt. Now, fast forward, you have these two gentlemen. Which one of these two gentlemen will 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 pose a problem for a person, a fighter like Habib Nurmagomedov? And I like to say it's Michael Chandler. I um, I don't know. I'd have well, to you have to you fight. have to watch him fight. Uh, Dan Hooker, you need to watch him fight too. Um, they have I mean, a very particular just, style just, that. Just like you know, in the back of my head, for some reason, as you were talking about it, I I was actually thinking about Hooker. Dan Hooker might might be the one that would give him a good challenge, but that's and, I have to and, see a fight. Here's the thing: is because everyone knows that Habib has a very particular style of fighting. Um, he's a, a renowned Greco-Roman fucking wrestler slash grappler. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure he's done those old Sambo tournaments too that the Russians do. Um, he's an amazing boxer. <laughs> Everyone forgets about that. Mm-hmm. And he's an amazing um, submission artist because that's pretty much how he's won his last two fights. Um However, the, the, I'll, I'll go on. A, I'll go out on a limb and say this: at the one hundred and fifty-five pound category, Habib poses a problem for most fighters on the roster, if not all of them. 
if he were to move up and wait, because the next category is Walter weight, Roger. So yeah. it's lightweight, Walter weight. That's a good maybe 10 pound. It's a 10 pound difference, give or take, maybe 11. Um, there's this gentleman that will gladly fight him at welterweight or lightweight, but I would love to see Habib gain 10 pounds and not cut so much weight and be at his natural kind of almost natural-ish walking weight. And do you remember the do you remember this gentleman? Uh, his name is Georges St. Pierre, GSP. Uh, yes, but he kind of sounds like yeah. Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yeah. Okay. Canadian. Yeah. 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 He, he, to me, is the greatest combat sport athlete of all time. I think the only one second to him for me was, uh, was Fyodor, Fedor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, Anenko, but you know, that he's, he's a shadow of what he used to be. And then second to Fyodor was, uh, Frank Mir for me. Um, everyone's like, no, no, John Jones, no, this I'm like, no, not even mighty mouse Johnson, the little, you know, was he, a, he was a flyweight, right? Jose? Yeah, he, he was a flyweight, but I mean, he got, he got dethroned by a triple C. So yeah. So I don't know, man. Henry Cejudo, who's yeah. not only an Olympian, a gold medal Olympian in wrestling for, for team USA. And then shout out to triple C. Yeah. He won two belts. In the UFC, Roger, at two weight categories. And um, I think he wants to pursue a, a career in WWE. So, but let's see how that works out. Because that's kind of like the the fallback for most of these guys. Because they're used to taking bumps. Um, they got to learn, actually, the, you know, the the theatrical part of pro wrestling. And quite frankly, I mean, the, the three of us know, man, you got to be a showstopper on the mic, man. And... And you got to know how I mean, to sell. I, I, I was watching old tapes of Ric Flair, man, because Ric Flair was a, a fucking legit wrestler, too. Mm -hmm. So it was Mr. Perfect. He was a legit amateur wrestler. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And then fast forward, the newer ones, a lot of them are have MMA background, like our personal favorite, uh, Roger, is Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was a pride FC fighter turned pro wrestler, but a lot of Japanese fighters are pro wrestlers yeah that's just the strong style of doing things in japan and it's making an influence here in north america especially in the u.s where yeah we know pro wrestling is fake um but you always want to have that backup plan in the event of a severe injury in mixed martial arts which is a fucking savage sport but to me, it's one of the greatest sports second of football, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, you have to have a backup plan because there's, there's, I'm not saying pro, there's no risk in pro wrestling, but of course it's scripted and everything is, you know, premeditated for an outcome. It's choreographed. Not to say you, I mean, we've seen some horrific fucking injuries in pro wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. But how quickly can your career end in that octagon? You, you have very a chance. Quickly. Very there's, quickly. There's a chance of you being killed. That's how exactly. bad. Exactly. So I mean, I'm a I'm a big advocate for. You know, I mean, uh, shout out to D Rod too, Daniel Rodriguez, uh, hometown dude from from SGV. He's also on the roster in UFC. Um, he actually trained at uh at uh, he actually trains at Joe's. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I, I never got to see him. Yeah, I trained when I trained there. I never got. I never got. To, I think I only bumped into D Rod once. Um, he also trains at Tenth Planet. I think he trains yeah. with Eddie right now. Yeah. So, um, you know Warren and and Chuck, right, Roger? Yeah. Uh, Pierce family. Uh, well, they're they're very tight with his dad. Um, and that's how. I mean, I I bumped into to D Rod a couple times at fucking at, at Target here. Cause he trains at the UFC gym. And then of course, when me and Jose were, were fucking shit up in Alhambra, I would run into him once in a while there too. Um, but you'll, you'll hear of him eventually. I mean, I'm a big fan and I'm a big supporter, but this particular fight here, man, th this is definitely what I'm looking forward to. And it's the co-main event. Um, and then the other undercards, I mean, the other fights on, on this, uh, not undercard, but on the, the main fight card, um, this Brazilian chick, Amanda Ribas, mm -hmm. 
or Hibas, should I say? <laughs> um, she's bad. Um, they're they're obviously uh, believe it's is this feather? No, that's not featherweight, is it? Let me check again. Wow, uh, that is strawweight, sir. Strawweight, so strawweight. Um, they're 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 very light, Roger. Um, obviously, Marina is twelve. One and two. She's got two draws, which is interesting. Um, but her last fight was a loss. She's obviously only got one, one, one defeat. Um, and here are the metrics, Roger. So, who do you think is going to win this fight? Mm, I honestly, just by looking at them, I was going to go for uh, Ribas. Hibas. Hibas. Yeah. All right, Jose. Who's your pick? Um, you know, I haven't, I think I've seen, uh, Amanda fight probably maybe once. I've never seen Marina Rodriguez fight. I, this is, this is a new name for me. So, um, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm going to go with just based off the Tokaya Marina. So that's Marina? my pick. Yeah. I give Marina. Okay. So my pick is they'll go. All three rounds, this will end in a decision. I don't think anyone's going to get submitted or knocked out because obviously Marina has a 42 percentile in KOs and TKOs. And of course, Amanda, I think, is a black belt, if I remember correctly. But look mm-hmm. at the, the decision percentages. Most, most, or well, more than uh, f- half of Marina's fights have gone the distance, and 30 percent for, for Amanda has gone the distance. And look at the fight time. She goes a whole 15 minutes. And she was a whole 12. So odds yeah. are this is probably going to go all three rounds. And I'm pretty sure Amanda will win. Um, I don't know unanimously, but she'll win either a split or um, or maybe majority. Because um, it's weird how judges score this shit. Like I had a research, Roger, what a majority decision is, a unanimous decision is. Uh, a split is easy, obviously. Um draw um win by dis- by dq stuff like that uh th- it's amazing how what how many ways now you can get disqualified and actually lose a fight on the spot Fuck. and roger doesn't like it he's like dude you can't stomp on him i'm like no dude it's not pride it's not pride rules man you can't kick him in the nuts i'm like no dude it's not pride. <laughs> what kind of <laughs> What kind of UFC, what kind of fucking fighting shit is that, dude? Man, can't elbow anybody, can't knee anybody yeah, in the head. Yeah, the, the elbow thing, I can, I can definitely. That's subjective, but the one yeah. thing I liked about Pride is they had a a system where if the fight went on the ground for too long, they would stand them up. Yeah, and if it, if it was no action, point deducted. But yeah. that's yeah, they get a warning. They get the they, they, they round up the card system, remember? Yeah, so it's a yellow card, and then yep. I think just, once just you like get that yellow card, and then yeah, they get the red card, and I think you get a point deducted because you're yes. stalling. Yeah, and, and so, then uh, for example, the only thing I hate about UFC is just it most of like the majority of the fights are on the ground and they're hugging each other. I'm like, come on, dude, this is well, not. I mean, if that's the case, then I would rather watch, of course, a, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu tournament so where it's strictly grappling. But then, you know, my my MMA brain kicks in. I'm just like, okay, I know exactly what they're trying to do uh, just with punches. That's the crazy part. Um, yeah. But what, I, what would I rather watch? I'd rather watch a banger any fucking day of the week. I don't care what anyone says. I love Brazilian jiu-jitsu, don't get me wrong. I love wrestling, but I am obsessed with boxing, kickboxing, and the art of dirty boxing. Because the art of dirty boxing is just that. Like, you know, Roger, man, dirty boxing is named named for a reason. And it's because you're basically the Ric Flair of fucking boxing, man. You sneak it in and just boom. (laughs) Oh, fuck. It's fucking beautiful, man. You catch people it's the element of surprise and you knock them out and um you know there's a lot of professional boxers that have, have done a great job of just mastering that and now with that big influence now mma fighters are becoming that good at boxing and throwing kicks which is fucking amazing but um yeah i mean 
I think it's it's obvious that you know either this one's kind of evenly matched up, but uh, then there's Matt Frevola, which I've watched him fight a couple of times, and uh, is it Odman? Od- I forget can't pronounce. He's Moroccan, but Odman um, Ad- is undefeated, Roger. And this is another light heavyweight bout. A uh, light heavy, uh, lightweight bout. Sorry. Um, they're both pretty evenly matched. The leg reach, uh, not that big of a significant difference, but look at, uh, Ottman. Look at his KO percentage, Roger. Fuck. And look at his average fight time, three minutes. So uh, he's got a lot of first round KOs. So, however, Matt is a submission specialist and can go the distance, but he's got an eight minute average fight time. So, I think this is pretty obvious. Who, they'll start with Jose. Who, who do you pick? <laughs> I don't know, man. But i take the guy on the right, Otman. Otman. Otman as yeah. a target. So, oh, well, what about you, Roger? Just by looking at him. I, well, by, by just by looking at these win stats, in order for Matt to actually have an advantage – he'd have to be in that fight. The fight would have to go on like at least two rounds just so he can try yeah. maybe wear out the other guy and get a submission. Um, yeah, because obviously, I mean, if his average fight time is only three minutes and 33 seconds. Right. That means this guy, Ottman, is he's a one-shot, one-kill person. So yeah. I would think he would probably yeah. fucking win it. If 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 he if he gets it early in the first round, he'll yeah. probably take it. So I'm I, think, it, I would pick him. If it's a standing, then obviously the man is gonna go to Ottman. Um yeah. if it's on the ground, yeah, I don't know. Then it kind of changes the whole dynamic of everything. Yeah, but uh, you know, you, you know right away to try to get a submission hold, you need to have to wear your opponent down so that way they can't break free. And who's the- like- uh, not, necessarily, uh, not necessarily not um, necessarily you know if you're in the right position the guy lets his guard down makes a mistake mental mistake you know gives up his guard or whatever you can get the submission um especially in the first round you're you're dry you're not having sweat yet you got so that grip is, is it gets very tight man as, as the longer the fight proceeds you you know that person's sweating um, they come kind of slippery. Stuff like My wife that. doing the wake. Look at that. She's why is she go to sleep. Oh, and thank you, thank you. <laughs> but um, uh, you know the the the. I agree with you guys. I think Azatar is probably going to win. Um, and I can predict how he's going to win. He's probably the. I mean, oh, you got yeah. a guy that can go the distance. So, um, but not really hefty on 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 his feet and you got this guy that he just he's probably one of those he, he'll touch you with one and you're done so uh, yeah. i'm picking otman as a taurus i guess how you pronounce it um and then what brings me to the next bout which um i'm a huge fan of jessica i i mean obviously i mean i've been following her for a while because she's on steep base team um but Joanne Calderwood, too, she's just this rough and tough fucking Brit that doesn't give a fuck she'll fight anyone. Fuck. And she's seven on the rankings, Roger. And Jessica went down to six. She was up a little bit higher. But she got a title shot against Valentina Shevchenko, who was the champ. Um, and she made the highlight reel, unfortunately, Roger. She got head kicked really bad. Wow. Yeah, like literally like collapse boom and yep. but if you know valentina she's that russian peruvian girl or panamanian girl I, I don't remember she speaks like five languages she's like fucking oh, kgb uh, like really the real like, like, black widow that's what she is yeah she's like czech and like i don't know this weird mix uh and she's, yeah, she's, she's she's spanish that's that's a crazy yes, part. I was like, what? She speaks perfect spanish and then she does this crazy like rain dance after each victory and it's like literally like it's the real life fucking Black Widow mixed with Vega from fucking Street Fighter. <laughs> Basically, right? Yeah. Oh, shit. Well, they're, they're pretty evenly matched. Same height, same weight, same similar reach, leg reach, same thing. 
Um, even the, the, I mean, obviously Joanne Calderwood has a higher percentage of KOs and TKOs, but look at Jessica's percentage on decisions, 73%. Her average fight time goes 13 minutes dude, and Joanne 10 minutes. So this one's a little bit tough because they're both, uh, Jessica's ranked six, Joanne's ranked seventh. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go with Jessica. I, uh, the distance and she'll win by a uh, majority decision. I don't know unanim- unanimously, but she'll win by majority. Um, no, no, I don't know if there's a significant difference between a majority and a unanimous, but I'm just going to say it. I'm going to choose majority decision for Jessica. I, so what about you guys? I'm going to go with uh, Jessica. I, I think it's going to go the distance It's going up three rounds. Uh, but yeah, uh, it'll probably be a close fight. It's probably going to, um, I think it's probably going to go to the ground eventually. Um, and is it going to be like any base fight or it's going to be like a kickbox match. But um, I think uh, Jessica will pull it off. Uh, probably unanimous. Okay. And, and just to clear things up, Roger, a majority decision is a winning criterion in several, you know, combat sports, whatever. And, but in a majority decision, two or three judges agree on which fighter won the match, while the third judge indicates that neither fighter won a draw. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm calling a majority decision, because Joanne probably is going to, she's no pushover, obviously. Um, she's, she's probably going to bang it up with Jessica. And don't expect this uh, fight, Roger, to go to the ground so much. This one's yeah, gonna. It, you're it, you're it gonna looks like it'll be. It, it looks like a close, like too close to call, you know. But if I'm gonna have to pick one, I think I think I'm gonna go with Joanne. You know, Joanne Calderwood. Yeah, just I mean, just because she has a, a very close decision rate, but her TKOs are probably are what gonna give her the edge. Maybe you know. I mean. It's, it's not a, a significant round. edge, yeah, but I, I, not to say that Joanne, I mean, she's a badass fighter too. Yeah. Um, but I, this is, this is a pretty good match. We'll see how All it right. goes. So yep. The next one would be, of course, the one I'm looking forward to is Dan Hooker and Michael Chandler. We already know there's no stats on Michael Chandler, but from what I've seen, again, this is Ken and Ryu, man. <laughs> This is, I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> it looks and like fucking Ken, bro. Look at him. I know. It's like, fuck, I can't wait to see this fight. Um, so, Jose, who do you got? And you got Dan Hooker or Michael Chandler? All right, man. Um, you know, I've probably seen Dan Hooker fight maybe like once, to be honest with you. Um, I think I'll probably have to go watch maybe a couple fights. But i seen Michael Chandler fight, man. i actually seen him fight live. I see. I went to see him. Um, when he had the rubber match with uh, Eddie Alvarez uh, at the Pyramid in oh, Long Beach, yes. at, at Cal State Long Beach, man, I yes. saw that fight. And when they, they had it at Bellator, dude, Michael's a fucking beast. That guy has yeah. some run and pound. He has an incredible uh, takedown game. Um, not so much submission, but his his mo is ground and pound. Um, I was watching something at work where they're showing the ESPN with his training. Um, the guy's just smashing on the damn dummy. Um, honestly, I feel, and then don't even get me wrong, uh, this guy has incredible uh, boxing as well. So his hands are, are, are there. So I think I think he has the edge. I think we're going to get a really, really interesting fight. Um, it might go the distance. I don't think anybody's going to particularly knock out somebody. It could. But I, I, hope I'm, I hope I get surprised. But if not, for sure, um, it's going to go the distance. Uh, Michael's going to pull off. He'll probably get a couple takedowns, and then he'll win by unanimous decision. Hmm. Unanimous. Wow. Unanimous. He's going to take him down, do a couple round of pounds, and then he's going to pull off the unanimous decision. Ooh, okay. Roger, just by what you see and already what we know, who do you think is going to win? Oh, geez. (laughs) Because you're saying Ryu and Ken – I'm like, well, yes. they both have, they're both evenly matched, but they each have their own thing because Ryu has power and Ken has agility. So it's hard to, it's hard to fucking t- 
to choose, but I would think probably Dan Hooker might pull some kind of clutch win. Yeah. Ooh, nice clutch win too. Uh, Shit, yeah. he, he might, might, he might, he might pull something too, out, man. man. It, 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 it may, it it like, I don't know. Uh, you're going to say decision, unanimous decision, probably. I think it'll be a split decision. Yeah, you know, because uh, it looks like they're gonna, they're gonna, you know, give everybody a good fight. But probably Dan is gonna pull something off in the last round. That's what I'm predicting. So we'll see. Yeah. And and so, and I say this. And if it does happen, he's gonna catch Michael by surprise. Yeah. He's totally by surprise. Yeah. So fuck, yeah, crazy ass totally. fucking kick, move, punch, some shit's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. So my 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 pick would be Michael Chandler only because I'm a huge fan of the guy. Not 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 no no um not not knocking on Dan Hooker is what I meant to say. No disrespect. He's a, yeah, no disrespect at all because Dan Hooker's a fucking amazing fighter too. However, this is Michael Chandler's debut in the UFC. He's coming in with all this momentum, all this drive um i'm pretty sure what michael's gonna end up doing is he'll they'll this fight will probably be stopped in the fucking fourth round maybe uh because dan dan Wait, is gonna get are they going, with are they going for five or are they going they're going three i, I think I, they're going I, three they're, they're going three i think on this one i i would yeah. like to think they go five but i think they're going three um, but, um, anyway, it'll end in the third is what I'm saying. Uh, I don't think they're going five. It'll end in the third and Michael is probably going to take him down, uh, pound him up and that's it. Whoever the ref is, is just going to get in the way and Michael wins. TKO. All right. I agree, man. I agree. The momentum is with him. Happen. The momentum is with him. I'm not saying like because Dan's uh, average fight time is only eight minutes and forty two seconds, and only fifteen percent of his fights have gone to, to a decision, Roger. Um, but his KO percentage is at fifty with a thirty five percent submission, and I've seen Michael Chandler fight several five round fights, and um, th- this guy just keeps a really nasty pace for for people that can't keep up with that. And it's a problem. Um, uh, I, I, I'm picking Michael Chandler, man. That's, that's it. He's going to TKO. <laughs> okay. we're, we're, we'll find out on Saturday. Yeah. So I, then, I, I just, I just um, hope, yeah, then I just hope he doesn't event. have a, sorry. I just hope he doesn't have a disappointing uh, debut. Like Ben Askren, man. Remember that fight? Oh yeah. That fight with, with Robbie Lawler, with Robert Lawler and, yeah, I was that that's uh, that's totally subjective too, but um this brings me to this, the main event. Uh Dustin Poirier and Mystic Mac, Conor McGregor. Um this is probably a perfect matchup, I would say. The only difference is like Conor has a two inch reach advantage, which is significant, Roger, believe it or not. Um <laughs> That means he can just touch you. He has that much. Those he has two inches to work with. Just just kiss you with his left hand. And look at the stats, man. They're they're obviously very, very identical in fight time. A fifty five for Dustin. A twenty for Connor. Uh, obviously, Dustin has had more decision wins. Um, Submission, same thing. I don't think I. I think Connor's only submitted a couple people in his career, if I remember. But look at that, Roger. Eighty-six percent KO and TKO for Connor. Eighty-six, man. That is fucking crazy. And then fifty percent for uh, for Dustin. What do you think? What do you guys think is going to happen here? I honestly don't want to pick. I don't uh, either, but I have I, to. I'll go, I'll go first. This, this is, is a fight round fight, too. A fight round fight. Look, I saw the first fight, and he cut through him like 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 a like a hot knife on butter. Who oh, Connor? Yeah, he did. And then um, I saw a fight breakdown by um, 
uh, what's his name? Um, uh, the commentator now, um, the former uh, bantamweight champion. Uh, what's his name? Oh, uh, Dominic Cruz. Dom, um, yeah. So he, he broke it down. He's like everything he he throws. It's a setup to something in the future. So he's setting him up for something always. So if it's like a hook kick, if it's a punch, you know, um, he's directing some way to set up for something. So Connor is very smart. He's a smart fighter, man. Um, this guy has power. He has a wicked left hand, man. Um, he puts people to sleep. Like, literally, I watched that fight. He touched them. He went memes, man. That guy that guy went out. Um, <laughs> Dustin went out, bro. I've seen I, think it's gonna be, I think it's going to be the same thing, man. I think, um, obviously, Dustin's not the same fighter he was um, from that, you know, three, four years ago. Um, he's a much better fighter now, but... Connor's too good, man. Um, in this in this scenario, Connor's too good. Um, in my own, I think it'll last more than one round. It'll probably go two, three, but eventually, Connor Connor's gonna take over. Either he's gonna knock him out, uh, or he can submit him. Um, he has an underrated ground game. Obviously, not in the level of Khabib, but it's there, man. Um, just little rumor mills that I've heard before. You know, um, you know, I quote unquote from Eddie that he's seen him grapple at uh Tenth Planet back when it was uh in downtown at headquarters at the tap out. Connor popped in um before he was champ, decided to roll with a couple guys. He said it was amazing. Like this guy was just going through like brown belts like nothing. So wow. the ground game is there, man. That threat is there, but obviously, you know, the power's in the hand. So um, I feel it's going to be Connor, KO, second second round, maybe third. Wow. Old. Old. Roger, what do you think, man? Like I said, dude, I, I don't think I want to fucking pick because it's just, it looks, it's going to be a close fight, I think. That's my prediction. I was just say, you know what? The, the one who has the most tattoos is going to win. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think even with that shit too. I mean, just so, that we'll Dustin see. has that Whoever same on his right the arm. Tattoo power is going to end up winning. So the tattoo um, power. <laughs> uh, so I, I, here's what I. I just oh yeah, go ahead. It. No, I just want to watch this fight because I just know this is going to be a good fight. So yeah, it's it's gonna More be a power, damn good fight. You know, luck to both of them because they're good, but they're both good fighters. Um, they're both going to be I filthy they, rich I, after this. Anyway, this, this, so. this is this is oh, yeah. gonna be, this is going to be a good match, but we just have to see how it plays out. There's, uh, I think maybe we can figure out who's going to win it probably by the end of the first round. Yeah, uh, totally. I was going to say that this this fight will probably end up going no more than four rounds. Um, they're going to feel each other out in the first round. I already know both how they do it. There's going to be some late kicks thrown. Um, Dustin is probably going to test his range to see how much he can kiss him with, uh, with his with his with his left jab because obviously he's orthodox and you know Connor's a southpaw. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that that alone right there is going to create a lot of uh, what I call fight math in the octagon because both of them are that their fight IQ is just really really good. Yeah. Um, but uh, expect a lot of a lot of good uh, significant strikes in the first, not not to the uh, whoa extent. Um, but once the second round kicks in, then that's when both of them are, gonna, are definitely going to kick it into gear. The only fucked up part that about this fight from difference from last year is there's not going to be a crowd. Yeah, and no, I'm so there is going to be a crowd. There is going to be a crowd. It's the limit. They just did this the last uh, last fight night, not the one that just passed today. Well, probably two, but the one last Saturday. They had a limited crowd, so there will be a crowd there. Limited. You know what I mean, man. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean. I'm used to it. that Conor McGregor crowd that invades Vegas or any fucking venue he fights at, man. And that's not happening this Saturday. Does it matter? No, not to Connor, obviously, and not to Dustin. 
but it makes the fight that much more exciting and fun. And to hear the 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 the, the football chants that they, <laughs> yeah. they it's so awesome, dude. Like it's literally like they're they're cheering on like it's like a it is a gladiator sport, but that's their gladiator going in the octagon representing yeah. their fucking country. And yeah. they cheer him on whether he wins or fucking loses. It's amazing, yeah. man. It's it, like it, it, it is an amazing thing. Um did I ever send you that video that I showed you when I went to when I went to Vegas to watch him fight Aldo? Yeah. Yeah. So that's I where got uh, from Rod and Rod. Yeah. yeah. It was Rod so crazy. It was insane. It's like they won the yeah. World Cup, dude. <laughs> yeah. it was fucking crazy and people were like fuck it we'll join you so everyone was in on the fun dude yeah it was so much was fun man. and dude dude one thing i'll learn my lesson forever do not try to out drink an irishman dude <laughs> do not do not even attempt and, and uh, I tried, but no, no, these guys kept going and walking. I was just like, dude, I'm about to fall asleep on the toilet. <laughs> I was like, no, no, thank you, man. But uh, nonetheless, those are our bold predictions for yeah. um, what is now UFC 257, uh, Fight mm-hmm. Island UFC 257. Um. I think every time there's a big fucking main event, we should we should have picks, um, simply because of the significance of the fights. Um, I'm still waiting for future bouts to be, you know, basically drawn up on a fucking whiteboard and making it happen. Like, um, for example, John Jones fighting at heavyweight against I don't know, not Brock Lesnar. I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, yeah, because. As much as Brock is a burly big dude, um, his Jose pointed out before his striking is not that great. Uh, he's all wrestling, he's all submissions now. That's yeah, that's his yeah. that's his mo. Um, then you get a guy like John Jones, who's just an overall just killer of a of a person. Um, doesn't stand a chance. Brock does not stand a chance. He does stand a chance, hypothetically speaking. But doesn't stand a chance against John Jones' stand-up, I think, in my opinion. So um, not saying Brock can't throw, because we've seen him throw, but like even the way he stands, it's so weird. Like he fights <laughs> him like this. It's so awkward, man. Like he's not yeah. gonna do shit. <laughs> no, and then like when he fought King Velasquez, the 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 fight that that basically made him what eleven years ago. That's yep. when you saw a uh, uh, cane, like literally, fundamentally, hand here, hand in front, really tight, and then just fucking nailed him, dude, and left him that scar. Roger, that scar that Brock yeah. has is from Cain Velasquez. Fuck. And and you know, shout fuck, shout out to my favorite, one of my favorite heavyweights of all time, man. Yep. That fortunately, his his career just dude was cut short because. He's a grindy fucking Mexican, Roger. And, you know, your body could only take so much after a while. But, um, yeah. but fuck, man, we're hitting the two hour and 53 minute mark. I think this might be a record. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my um, God. We will touch, we will yeah, touch base again. <laughs> no, we had a lot. We, had, we, we haven't had a podcast with this, this dick. This um, dick. But, um, this Bingasso. But be sure to uh, tune in again on Saturday. Uh, shameless promotion for the richest fucking MMA promoter in the world, Dana White. Fuck you <laughs> and your money. Give me one percent of what you Asshole. Give me a few of his swords. That's all. At least give me the UFC game in a PS5, bro. That's all I want, bro. I don't know. Right. That way I can sell it on eBay. Um. Anyways, thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Thanks again, guys, for for coming on. Um, yeah. We shall hey, do it again. You know what the crazy part is? We all have Dodger gear on. Go Dodgers! Exactly. exactly. Go well, even shout out to the uh, Albuquerque. Um, uh, the, the, it's still isotopes, right? Yeah, they're the isotopes. Isotopes. Yeah. yeah. 
That's uh, wow. that's LA's fucking. Is it two A or one A? Um, I don't think they're it's under double the, A, right? Yeah, it was like the double A, but I don't think they're under the Dodger anymore. Um, no, I don't know well, what team they're under now. Yeah, yeah, yeah farm a system for a long time. We're, we're farm, dude, and um. Albuquerque's cool, man. I was impressed. So hopefully I get to go back again. You gotta come back. Take some, that, take some of that chili. Make your asshole sure. burn. Take Not more fun. breweries. Hell yeah. We could jump into limos, Roger. Fuck you. <laughs> what happened? Stop telling us. Stop telling lies. A party. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, Namrock yeah. out. Joe, Golden Joe MMA out. And Royer out. Ooh. Peace.